Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm supposed to take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Yeah. Value taming, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to haters. Now they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Okay, episode 386. Folks, there's so many different weird legal things going on having to do with law, lawyers. You know these lawyers, how they are. They know the law. And you need to talk to them to educate us on what's going on today. We have uh, probably the most famous lawyer in America today that you see her on TV pretty much every week. And she likes to fight. I don't know why. She likes fights. She likes picking fights. She likes it when they pick fights against her. But she doesn't back down. We have the great Alina Haba in the house today. How are you, Alina? Hi. I'm How, good. It's been Great. a long time. We haven't seen you for a long time. Know, Everything I've good? Been a little busy. Yeah, that's good. Very <laughs> good. But no, uh, obviously we got a lot of stories, guys, we're going to be going through today. For sure want to get an update with what's happening with the president, Trump, with all the different uh, legal battles. Uh, uh, Tom, I think you just gave an uh, uh, update this morning that the SPF case, the judge, is the same judge that was on the E. Jean Carroll case, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. So it'll be interesting to see how he handles that. You know, with SPF, we'll get you, get, get some of your feedback on that. Mm -hmm. Then there's this guy, I don't know if you've heard of him, this guy's name is Puff Daddy, P. Diddy. He, <laughs> uh, he's going through some legal issues. We have some videos of a guy that uh, he claims other people like it his way. What's his name? Uh, uh, I think his name is Usher, Usher, if I'm not mistaken, right? He has a, a video that came out talking about uh, Diddy. There's a couple Justin Bieber videos, which we'll show, Rob, I'm sure you have. And then aside from that, we have some stories from Ronna McDaniel. She got paid, uh, highest paid person on NBC, apparently, 20 minutes. She, she was getting paid $30,000 an hour. Oh. Can you imagine mm -hmm. negotiating a contract like that? She gets paid $30,000 an hour. We'll tell you the math on how that worked out. Stay tuned. <laughs> You'll see why it's $30,000 an hour, it, it take a few minutes to f fully see what's going on there. Pennsylvania voter ballot, you know, all of a sudden is saying we need to know the dates. We need to all the information. So some people are not happy. Some people are happy, but it's progress towards actual accountability with um, property, with uh, what do you call it, with voting. And then John Stewart, you know, everybody's talking about how much, you know, President Trump overvalued his properties. Some data came up that John Stewart is apparently a big fan of Trump's, uh, you know, philosophy. And he also increased his home value, labeling it, you know, yeah. overvalued it by 829 percent. John, what a capitalist. What a capitalist. Wow. What a capitalist the great so, John Stewart so is. Everybody you know? does it. We all Whoa. get weird. Wow. Tish. We'll, Tish. We'll, <laughs> 29 Tish. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. And then, by the way, did you guys hear about the warnings from FBI? Did you did you uh -oh. see the warning about this like weekend? This is, right? this is serious. Warnings from FBI saying Hamas is planning on attacking different, like in a 9-11 type of attack this weekend. Literally, I'll show you the video that's being shown. And they're, uh, they're, they're targeting uh, Jewish, I think it's, uh, uh, it, anyways, they're targeting Christian churches. You'll see what it is. Oh, the great. update will be given. I have the video. I'll share that with you guys. Easter weekend, a lot of people be in churches. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I have some stuff on that. And then uh, uh, I'll show you one clip on who Nickelodeon is thinking about their new CEO. I think it's very important for you guys to see who's going to be Nickelodeon's first CEO. Great. And then Alex Jones had Shmuley on. I don't know if you saw Ooh. this. Alex Jones had uh, Rabbi Shmuley on. Shmuley. And they were going back and forth. It's a little awkward. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but he's a rabbi. So we have to watch it oh, to yeah. see what you know, Well, he's, we he's holiness. Very, very important what's going on with that. So anyways, and we got a few other stories. Having said that, Alina. What is the latest with President Trump's case? Obviously, everybody for the longest time was saying, Monday, Monday, it's going to happen, Monday. 454, four, he's going to have to pay if he doesn't uh, seize his assets. Mm -hmm. You know, the view, we're, I can't wait. I want to see that, you know, seizing his assets and the yeah. property. I want to see all of that stuff. What is the latest? What's been happening? So we're winning. And I've always tell people, you know, this is the long game. Okay. We are in a corrupt system. There's no question about it. So... People love to say, look, he's going to get we're going to go over there and Tish James is going to take the keys to Trump Tower. I think uh, Whoopi Goldberg or, and all of them got excited about putting a chain around Trump Tower and mm. literally were were taunting. Um, it was a, a really pathetic sight, actually. And uh, it didn't happen. Why? Because the appellate division 
read our papers, saw that there are reasons for a stay, saw that it absolutely is ridiculous to have somebody lose an asset while the appellate division hasn't had an opportunity to look at the injustices, look at the decision making that was so flawed. And frankly, the motivation on this case was flawed. She was motivated to bring this case before she was even in office. That's what she ran on, Miss James. So <clears throat> that in itself, selective prosecution happens to be illegal. It shouldn't happen. Um, look, they stated, it. They dropped it. They said, we're not taking assets. Everything is frozen. Not only, and this is the one thing that nobody talks about. They didn't just say you're not paying that amount of money, which by the way, is almost close to a billion dollars with a bond because you have to pay 10% more. Plus you have to pay interest. The judges said, no, we're stopping everything. You're not enforcing this. You're going to put 175 mil, which is still crazy, in a bank. But we're also not enforcing any decision against the defendants not to be able to work in New York in real estate. We're also not enforcing the decisions against Alan Weisselberg, Jeff McCart, people that did nothing wrong, that were working for a company and did their job and truly did nothing wrong. Nobody did. Um, and every single part of that decision from Judge and Gorin, that twisted weird decision, weird looking guy, he, mm. every single thing was put on hold, everything. Mm. While we have the opportunity now to say, this is what I was screaming about outside the courtroom steps every day, you know, so we're on hold and, and I mean, we're on hold for an expensive price, but at least we're seeing a little bit of, you know, due process and, and sense. Uh, and how did he come up with the 175 million? I don't know. Um, I, ha I have no idea. You know, it wasn't in there. There wasn't any qualification. Yeah. Or, but, Alina, are, are they starting to figure out that this tactic that they're using is not, it's like, it's done? It's I not going to work? We could have call they... the DNC and ask them. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. You know, I, I don't understand how they couldn't see that their overreaching has really hurt them because Donald Trump has always been famous. He has always been a very smart businessman, which is why I think he's a very good president. He attacks things from a business perspective, which I think some presidents and some politicians, frankly, do lack mm. that that experience. Right. Um, and because of that, they've attacked him so badly that now you've taken a billionaire and made him sympathetic because you're hurt. You're trying to hurt him. It's so obvious that now we've got people from the left, the middles. They're coming to our side and saying, mm -hmm. whoa, this is just too much. Yeah. You know, they're going to do this to me. Exactly. What am I going to do? I don't have Haba outside screaming. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? And that's been my message always is, um, you know, they're doing it to him, but they'll do it to us. They'll do it to me. I'm sure they'll do it to everybody. And that's what scares me. So that's that's really it's the motivation is really not just President Trump. It's America. So let me ask you this. So this 175 mm -hmm. we're talking about, OK, it has to be in an account. Fine. He yeah. gets puts that cash. No problem. If if we size up the enemy of President Trump as being deceptive, dark, divisive, uh, willing to do anything to eliminate him as a candidate going into 2024, November 5th, anything they can do, right, to spin the story and say, look at him now, he's part of the establishment, he's going to New York begging people for money, Wall Street, all this stuff. If if that was the case, he's still got a few more uh, cases open. I, is it is it possible that they may come up and say, yeah, for this one, you have to pay $280 million. This one's going to be $73 million, another $128 million, another $190 million. Can they keep doing this between now and October to just really deplete all of his savings? So, <laughs> look, the reality is he's an incredibly wealthy man. Um, he His wealth, like all wealthy individuals that have intelligence, is being put to work. It's in buildings. It's in real estate. It's in hotels. It's in golf. Um, they're not, you know, whatever they're going to try and do, they forget who they're dealing with, number one. But realistically, Patrick, w what we do have in front of us is really not the civil suits. The civil suits uh, were already done. And if if you what you're asking, I believe already happened. We had the Carroll lawsuit. He got hit with an insane and that and that was a suit that I obviously mm -hmm. did. Um, we had already lost <clears throat> prior and. We have not been heard on appeal on that first loss. This is the 83.3 million. 83.3 million. Right. That was the first one. Right. Which actually turns out to be 91 million when you look at it with the bond, okay, with the 10%. You have to put 10% on top. People think you put 10% into the court. Decrease. You put the entire amount plus 10% into the appellate division. So it's a number that the court gives plus 10%, plus <clears throat> the interest on the bond, plus whatever they get in fees. It's plus, plus, plus. So we already got that hit. 
I did that trial two weeks after uh, Letitia James' trial ended. I was on that trial for four months. The Judge and Gorin waited to put his decision until after the jury came out with Carol. So we had that happen. We had that happen. It was $91 million. And then Tish James, her original complaint, if you look, was $250 million. In the middle of the trial, towards the end, she changes it and says, now I want more. Not because the facts were bad. Frankly, the facts were good. Deutsche Bank came, took the stand, said he was a whale of the client. We actually wanted him because we wanted his connections. Zurich still insures us. You know, all these things. The judge didn't care. Tish asked for more. He gave exactly what she wanted. There was no consideration for witnesses or facts or law. It's all crazy and How corrupt. How did come up with these So numbers? it was 91, then 375. They're out of thin air. Their <clears> own <throat> expert said, even if we looked at the what this judge is saying is an overvalue. Okay. He's also saying Marilago's 18 million. Yeah. Okay. So sure. If you think Marilago's worth 18 million, well, there's about a, over a billion dollars of, of over. It's ridiculous. There is no way. If Marilago's <clears> 18 million, we should all buy it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And flip it. And yeah. we'll all be we'll all be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, it's crazy. But if you look at it that way, yeah, that was already planned, Patrick. That's what they did. They did 91. Yeah. Then they did 375. 375 becomes more like 600 million. So they were trying to take it. By the way, remember, Tish asked for his statements, asked for financials. She changed the number based on what cash he had. It's just, it's there's zero percent question in my mind. That's what happened. So, so, Lena, if you ask that, like the average person that doesn't know about law, doesn't know about all this, yeah. and they're looking at this from the outside, looking in, even left or right, and they're saying to themselves, how the hell are they getting away with this and nobody's saying anything? In, in the legal world, in government, in Congress, yeah. so, somebody should be like, all right, guys, time out. Besides, I don't care what the hell, who the person is, what are you guys doing? This is blatantly obvious that it's a tactic to try to take, like, keep them off the ballot. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but I think that. I think that we have a problem with accountability with the Democrat side, and I'm not sure we figured out how to tackle them. We have to. I think President Trump um, would make everything even Stephen when he gets back into office. I think that what we have to deal with is exactly that. We've got we could keep talking about it. I could go on TV every day and talk about how we have White House logs that came out while I was on trial. I'm sitting in the back room and I find out that there were White House logs that Tish James visited the White House. Yeah. Before and after the complaint was filed. What? How was that not on the news? If I didn't have such a loud mouth, people wouldn't hear the truth. So so I'm looking at it and I'm going, what? How is this possible? And it didn't get covered. It didn't get covered. I mean, who is that public info fight right now? Wanted to find out that she's visited the White House. That's public. I could. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So I, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, how do we hold them accountable? Well, these are elected officials. You know, we had people there. We have gag orders being put on us. How is that OK? Yeah. Gag I'll orders say, on say. lawyers. Yeah. Imagine I go to court. I'm your lawyer. And, you and the talk. judge says, ha, ha, but no, no, you can't talk about a couple things here. What? How about the Carroll case? The judge asked me the questions I was going to ask my client in public, in front of the media, before he took the stand, and then asked me what his answers would be. I was like, excuse me? Nobody talks about it. Yeah, Transcript. Is, ask for the trans. It's there. It's crazy. Yeah, this is judicial activism as, at its worst. Judicial activism is where the judge is sort of acting as a lobbyist on behalf right. of a political side. And in civil cases, it can run amok as long as you get a dirty judge. At least at the federal level, you know, you have federal sentencing guidelines, right? Which right. was you, that, that a sentence will be this much, might be this much, and can be extended to this much on the circumstances yeah, that, the, that, that the, uh, you know, that the, that the, the, the basically the AGs for states or whatever that are participating and remand things like to the Southern District of New York for business and it looks terrible and they say, okay, well then your guidelines here, but you're going to get this. But for civil, Vinny, civil, it can run a mutt. All you need is a bad, dirty judge. He puts a gag order here. He impugns a witness here. He prevents us here. He suppresses us here. And you're literally a puppet and you feel like you're in the middle of Congress during a debate literally. for a yeah. bill rather than in the halls of justice with rules and regulations. We're, we are supposed to have, you know, the executive, the judicial, 
and then legislative. Legislative is where we run amok until we figure it out. Judicial, we're supposed to have procedures and laws and standards and things that go in there. This didn't happen. They basically decided that the civil case, they were going to run it like a political campaign. And for everybody listening, that's what you should think about here, that the, the Trump cases were run like a political campaign by a filthy, corrupt judicial. Yeah, they happened. are politically motivated. And there were things that were done that I know were meant to make me look stupid. And, you know, uh, judges admonishing me, telling me to sit down in front of a jury um, the way they spoke. There was nothing I was doing procedurally or in evidence rules that was wrong. Now, the press covered it that way because the judge made them think and would say things like, you should read the evidence rules. And I'm looking and I'm saying, well, I'm trying to be an ethical lawyer here and respectful. Um, but I can't I, you, you can't really talk back to a judge, right? Especially yeah. when a judge is telling you they're going to throw you in jail, um, which happened on the Carroll case. Imagine in a civil case because I objected to a PowerPoint slide that. I wanted in and he said is not coming in. The PowerPoint slide literally proved everything I had said in the case. It said that, look, if somebody tweets something and President Trump doesn't acknowledge it for five hours, but they're getting hate from trolls, how can you blame President Trump for defamation? That slide was taken out. I was not allowed to bring it in. And the jury couldn't see it. But the judge, the way they do it, he did it in front of the press. He didn't do it in chambers. He does it so that people start to have this narrative. Oh, she's not a good lawyer. Oh, she's not bright. Oh, she's not this and that. Is that the, the judge said he's going to throw you in jail? Yeah. Yeah, that, the, the weird guy. But, so question, uh, Lynn, was, did you guys file any motions against Letitia James for all the, all the videos and all the rhetoric of, I'm going to go after Trump? I, how is that not a conf conflict of interest to get yeah, her Rick, taken off the case? So, so her being on the case is different than Fannie Willis. Okay. So Tish James actually doesn't do the cases. Okay. She's a figurehead effectively, right? So she's got a team that we dealt with for three years and that team tried the case. She would show up, she would sit in the back, she would have her coffee. She wasn't really trying the case. Now, she was giving the directives. She was giving the directives, much like Merrick Garland of or course. any of them, right? Yeah. But does, did we argue selective prosecution? A hundred times. Did we argue that she persecuted, prosecuted President Trump to get into office, said it before, that it was improper, that she was unethical, all those things, a hundred times. Was it covered? No. no. Just like her at the, just like her going to the White House to visit. I, the, I, what I want to ask is how they come up with these numbers, and we'll get to that. Let's first go to our sponsor. Go ahead, go ahead, Rob, and play this clip. So, look, I've been in the financial industry since 9-11, the day before 9-11, and I've owned stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, crypto, gold, you name it, I've owned it. But the one thing that's very important part of my portfolio all these years is gold. I love having a percentage of my net worth in gold that I have access to in case of many different things. That's why we chose to work with our new sponsor, American Hartford Gold. If you have retirement funds that you cannot afford to lose, American Hartford Gold will ship physical gold or silver directly to your door. Also, if you have retirement funds that you can't afford to lose, now is the time to call American Hartford Gold, a precious metal dealer you can trust. They have the finest products, amazing customer service, and a buyback commitment. They've earned a five-star rating from thousands of reviews and an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Tell them I sent you and they'll send you up to $5,000 worth of free silver on your first order. So click on the link in the description or call 866-939-6984. Again, 866-939-6984. So here's a question I got, Tom. So you know you go to appraisal school, okay? You're going to get certified. Uh, how do you appraise a property? Here's how you do it. The math formula is this based on this divided by this times this compared in the last comps of the last three months, six months. The comps that are from the last three months have more credibility than comps from the last 12 months versus the last two years. And then if you take this formula, you come up with exactly around a 98% accuracy on what it should be. This property is worth $1.36 million. Great. Is there a formula, these judges, that have this much power that they have to go through to... No, there is no, no formula. <laughs> there, no. there used to be. A, I'd love to hear your point on it. There used to be relative standards. Like you look at personal injury. OK, how many days of work did you lose? What do you earn on your income? What was that? So what is the direct calculable 
compensatory damages. But then this whole thing comes in there of pain and suffering. How do you measure that? You measure that on how far John Edwards can push a jury. Remember that presidential candidate? Mm -hmm. That was his business. And then what you go through is almost like the punitive side, where I award the victim basically a fine against the company that made the defective product. And that can go to the moon based on the heart of the of juries and judges, and they do whatever they want. It's it's all in the courtroom skill, and this this company deserves to pay goes beyond how many days did you miss work and what is the some sort of implied pain and suffering that we can get our arms around. Yeah, that's 100% what happened. So, and don't forget, people say, well, there was a jury. Well, yeah, but the jury, like I said, is under the directive of the judge, and the jury, before they deliberate, gets jury instructions that the judge determines what goes in, what goes out. So we can argue about it, but the judge has the final say. So the judge is directing traffic. So people have to remember that. And Gorin didn't have a jury. He didn't have a jury, not because I forgot to check a box. He didn't have a jury because he decided there was not going to be a jury. He decided it was an equitable 6312, and I'm getting too much in the weeds probably for the non-lawyers, but he used a, they used a consumer fraud statute, okay? Consumer fraud is when a Verizon, an AT&T, is surcharging everybody on their bills two cents more than they should have. Consumer fraud, Letitia James steps in, this is what she's supposed to do as the AG, and protects the state of New York constituents, takes care of it, sues AT&T, and says, hey, we don't like this. It's like what's going on with Apple right now, okay? The, the DOJ is going after mm-hmm, Apple, mm-hmm. saying you can't have a monopoly. So those are consumer fraud statutes. She used a consumer fraud statute against a private company and a private individual because after three years, she didn't have anything. So instead she said, okay, I can't find an actual fraud. I can't find. So after three years of investigation, I'm going to have to use a consumer fraud statute. By doing that, the judge didn't have to give us a jury. Okay. And their own experts didn't come up with numbers like 375, their own experts, the, the baddest people they could find couldn't get to that number. And the judge gave Letitia James everything and more than she asked. That's what happened. It, it was so mind boggling. But of course, my Lago's 18 million. Of yeah, course. Right. In a small way, what if you have a hundred mile an hour speeding ticket? Mm-hmm. Okay. The law says you're going to lose your license for six months. But what is the fine and court cost? If you are an 18 year old arrogant kid rolling your eyes and looking at the judge, mm-hmm. that could go from 1000 to 2500 just like this because the judge feels that you are not are sufficiently, you know, um, feeling the pain penitent in front of the judge and respectful of the proceeding so the judge can do that you know what i'm going to charge you a thousand dollar court costs the last woman there on a something could have been 30 but the judge has latitude but remember there's no jury in a speeding case she effectively turned it in to a consumer fraud case where it's one judge acting as arbiter Mm -hmm. not a full process with the jury am i summarizing a hundred percent and by the way this was if it was a commercial consumer fraud statute it should have been in the commercial division we asked that it be moved as it normally would we went to the head judge we said This should not stay with this guy. He doesn't understand 6312. This is not his purview. He's a local state guy. He shouldn't be. He's not the commercial division. He's civil division. So they now use the 6312. So now we got 6312 in front of a judge that doesn't typically do it because they wanted to keep him on because he was so good to them for three years and it all was coordinated. So now we're in front of a judge trying to explain to him something that, frankly, is not in his wheelhouse. And you could tell by the comments. I mean, this guy got overturned, if you look at his history, for one of the worst landlord-tenant decisions in New York. He got reversed. And he touted during the trial often, you know, I haven't been reversed by you guys yet. Well, now you've been reversed five times. Hmm. Five times. So my, my point to everybody is, listen, I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm telling you it's a long game. But the appellate division has shown us some sensibility. And they've shown us that they're going to give us an opportunity to be heard. And and that's all I ask for. Because once you hear it, once you see it, once you look at the witnesses, the testimony, this case will not stand. It will not stand. And going to punitives, you know the Carroll case, that Bergdorf case? You know how much of it was punitives? 83 million. You know how much of it was punitives? 
approximately 60 something of it punitive. Don't do it again. Wow. <laughs> Pat, this would be like, oh. Pat, let's say that you're concerned for a, um, a cousin and you go into family court because you want to be there to represent the person sure. or maybe something sure. there. And they say, hey, you know what? The family court judge is out sick today, but uh, Judge Harris from traffic court is yeah, going to exactly. come in and hear this. <laughs> exactly. And, it's like, and you, would, you would lose your mind and saying, no, 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 no. I want a proper family court judge right. because I want to take custody of my little cousin and I want to make sure that they're safe. No, no, no. The traffic court judge is fine. He's a judge. That's what they did in New York. Mm -hmm. And Ridiculous. don't and, and I hate the narrative that we didn't file motions. We didn't check a box. We didn't do this. We didn't do that. We did everything. We were in the appellate division every week asking for reversals, asking, fighting. They won't cover it. They don't look at the motions. They don't want that. They want the narrative. The lawyers are dumb. This is bad. He's a fraud. It's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? This is made up. We're in make-believe land right now. But, but, but the reality of it is the law in, in New York allows for this to happen, right? I mean, is that, no. is that accurate this or no? This should have been in the commercial division. If you look at the law, it, this 6312 is supposed to go to the commercial division. Supposed the commercial division thing. judge, who, by the way, are very intelligent judges. I have a case with President Trump in front of a great judge. He's not a, a, a right judge, but he's fair. He's but fair. if you're saying supposed to, yeah. then, then how did this happen? They make arguments and, and you have, look, it, we have so many levels that we have to go through and we still have to make those arguments. One of the arguments we're going to make is this shouldn't have even been in front of this judge. We've made that argument before. Certain things are timely and I don't want to bore people, but you have to wait until the verdict sometimes to go fight certain things. And now that we have it, we're fighting the case. We take the entire transcript, we take the 11 weeks and we say, OK, guys. Now it's done. Now we can see there's been an injustice. Here's the order. Here's the decision. Now we're going to revisit from the beginning what happened. Years and years of investigation. I've been on this case not for six months, not for a year. I've been on this case for almost three years. I mean, this case, I've been in investigation, investigation phase. I was dealing with them. You know, they have depositions. They're called special proceedings. They go in, they, they'll, they'll have an EOU, it's called. And you basically get to ask Witnesses, questions, Letitia James's team, but they cannot have lawyers interject. You can sit there. I can sit there as a lawyer. They can effectively depose President Trump, but I have no right to object. I have no right to see any of the, the documents beforehand. Nothing. So that has been happening for years. What else is pending? What other things Pre are pending? Anything else that they can come after money? Well, obviously, there's the criminal case that I'm worried about, but that's when I say worried, I mean... I'm worried about corruption. I'm not worried about whether President Trump did anything. He did nothing wrong there either. He was actually president. Um, that's a Michael Cohen, you know, special, mm -hmm, that one. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I mean, it's all the Jack Smiths, you know. So no, no, not really money. Although I say that and you never know, you know, people can come out of the woodworks. But in a normal world, Patrick, no, we're done. You know, right. there's nothing that has a trial coming up in the civil world is what you're asking me, civil arena, that would um, – in any way be a threat to President Trump. And even if it did, there is an appellate level and we do have a right to do that. So, you know, we did win on those decisions. Did we win? Did, do I think he should have paid anything? No. But did we have a strong day? Yeah, we did. The appellate division came in and was like, whoa, you're not seizing assets, Tish. Calm down with your Twitter role. <laughs> Calm down with your interest. That, that, I mean, the taunting to put on Twitter you owe me this. Now you owe me that. Now you owe me that. That is her campaign. That's her campaign. How much of it is personal at this point between her and the Trump camp and Trump and you? Like, is it a personal attack? This is what she campaigned on. Right. I, it's all personal. She did. It's it's personal. It's it's driven by her backers. A lot of these cases, uh, you know, we've seen Reed Hoffman. Um, is a major backer for the litigation. The Carroll case, he he backed that. I wasn't allowed to talk about that in front of the jury, but he did. Um, you know, I wasn't allowed on that case to play the clip. We should play that clip. Mm -hmm. Anderson Cooper, E. Jean Carroll on Anderson Cooper saying, <clears throat> rape is sexy. Rape I couldn't is tell the jury. The judge wouldn't let me bring that into evidence. 
See, and that's that's where I say, you know, political campaigns. I get donors, you get donors. We go after it and let the voters decide. There were donors supporting a court case. This became a political campaign. Now, mm-hmm. the beauty of the U.S. Just, judicial system for all of its warts and flaws is the strength of our appellate system. And the strength of our appellate system, even if you get a corrupt circuit, like the Ninth Circuit, which is Northern California, the most overturned circuit, which even the best lawyers refer to as the Ninth Circus, Circus, um, has been overturned over and over by the uh, Supreme Court. And what we saw, Colorado, a bad state Supreme Court decision goes that this is the voting suppression that they did, goes to the U.S. Supremes, and the U.S. Supremes go, no, 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 nine to nothing, even the liberal judges. So the strength of our judicial system is our appellate system and our Supreme Court. However, that's not what they want. They want the headlines of the first case, and that's what they did here. So, okay, I'm not going to ask her because she's in the space for you. History, what you've seen. What part of the 450 do you think he's going to end up, end up, end up paying in the next two years? Uh, Once everything is done. My guesstimation. My intellectual hope is that it goes to zero on successful appeals that expose the flaws and and not just flaws. You can be flaws in a case, but the errors and the absolute bias that were introduced in because all of the judge's actions are appealable. The judge like a motion, you can go back. And so my hope is that at some point in time, you know, that the that the appellate said that the appeal system will work and we will come back to some level of sanity. Is it zero? I don't know, but it certainly shouldn't be these numbers. Alina, what do you think? Like by the time it's done, is this one of those things where it starts off and the number is so big and everybody who's not in the space, like, Oh my God, ends up being only $22 million. Yeah. This is one of those cases. Okay. It it. it was that absurd actually. And I I'm being recorded saying it. It was that absurd. I cannot imagine a judge who actually cares about their reputation, cares about their dignity, not seeing that for what it is. I, I really can't. I, I, I think that the that the decision indicates that. You know how there I see this. Thing? You know how I see this, Tom. Here's how I see this. I see this as let's just say I'm in and I'm connected with Rob, Rob Manfred, okay, and the Dodgers are coming up. And I'm on the Yankee side, okay? And Otani is going through serving a suspension for his gambling thing that he just got caught on where the story's getting worse and worse and worse, okay? And pick anybody on the, you know, National League. Pick a team that's going to be Dodgers competitors. Who, who are you going to put up? To pick one of them. Giants. Okay, the Giants. And I say, hey, Rob, here's what I want you to do. I want you to delay Otani's beginning of his suspension so it goes through playoffs so he won't be in the playoffs versus let's have the suspension be in the regular season so he comes back from suspension within 17 games left. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. With I the, totally so, understand what you're saying. So, so meaning, so they, if they know nothing's going to happen with this, but it plays the purpose of tying up the money, you can't have that money being tied up because if the money is tied up, the way to raise money changes. The way to go raise money changes where it's like, well, for, again, opposing strategist, deceptive, dark, manipulative. You have to come out and say, he's broke. He may have all these properties, but he has no cash. There's a difference between being paper rich and being cash rich. The man has no money. He's going around begging everybody for money. Just the other day, he had a meeting with Elon Musk. You know, start new rumors. He asked for $300 million. He asked to buy truth. So, yes. Mm-hmm. It's a very effective tactic from the other side to use. And then, right after election is over with, it's like, you know what, now nah, those things didn't happen. We've got to move on. Okay, I'll give you another story. Look at the <clears throat> case that's going to trial in uh, a couple weeks, the Alvin Bragg case. That case was, again, investigated for years. Mark Pomerantz quit working. He was brought in from a law firm that is Biden backed, has connections to Biden, has connections to the Clintons. It's the same firm. Okay. They take him out, pluck him, put him in the DA's office of New York. That's like someone plucking me and putting me in a Trump DA and being like, go after Hunter. That's the equivalent. Put him in. And then they read, they look at everything and they go, we're not bringing this case. He says, I'm running for office. 
he gets indicted. People don't realize that. That's what happened with the Stormy Daniels case. Hmm. It's politics. It's politics in law. You're not supposed to have legal lawfare. It's supposed to be the law. You know, you have church, you have state, you have, it's supposed to be a division and there's not now. And if you doubt me, look at the White House logs, look at what I'm telling you. They, there is a book. Mark Pamerantz was so angry at, at the DA's office for not bringing charges against Trump that he wrote a book, furious, furious because his Trump derangement syndrome was so severe. He was furious. And this is what you were talking about, by the way. This the kills me. Months, this kills me. This makes. I could even, not bring this in front of the jury. Brother, he would not let me bring. Just look at just look at her hair before it even plays. That's a crazy person hair. By She's the way, crazy. Even Anderson <laughs> Cooper, yeah, couldn't <clears throat> believe what she just said. Yeah, ahead, Rob. I don't feel like a victim. I was not thrown on the ground and ravished. Which the word rape carries so many sexual connotations. This was not. This was not sexual. It just it it hurt. It just what it just you know. Well, I think most people think of rape as a. I mean, it is a violent assault. It is not. I think sexual. most people think of rape as being sexy. Mm. What? <laughs> no, Let's watch him cut. Think of the fantasies. Mm. We're going to take a quick break. I don't want to be at work today. By the way, that was my entire. Defense. And they wouldn't let you play it. I was not allowed to play it. By the way, this is my favorite part. Oh, Look what she says to him. Go ahead, Rob. Watch it. Take a quick break. Watch, watch it. Watch what she we'll says. Talk more on the other fascinating. Side. You're fascinating to talk to. <laughs> she said that to me. Jesus. She said that to me. She said she Bro, liked talking she to me. Said, how she how, how much of the 83 million is she going to see? <laughs> Zero. Zero. And then I'm going to sue for attorney's fees. Oh, I can't wait for that. Oh, yeah. So oh. she can't go shopping? No, no, no. You mean she can't take she Rachel can't buy, shopping? She can't buy her France? Oh, wow. I watched that. I said, I said, Reed Hoffman, I hope you're watching. DNC, I hope you're watching. This is the person. This you is pick. the person you picked. Yeah. She, look at, I couldn't talk about her cat's name. I couldn't talk about that. Yeah, this. This. Oh, look at these people. Bro. You've the, talked about using some of Trump's money that you're about to get um, to help shore up women's rights. Do you know what that might be? What that might look like? Yes, or, Rachel. Oh my God. Yes. Tell me. Jeez. I had <laughs> such such great ideas for all the good I'm going to do with this money. Psycho. First thing, Rachel. You and I are going to go shopping. We're going to get completely <laughs> new wardrobes, new shoes. That's really good. Motorcycle for Crowley, new fishing rod for Robbie. Uh -huh, Rachel, what do you want? Yeah, the lawyers are panicking, by the way. Watch. Yeah. Rachel. Oh, my God. No, and then, and then <laughs> if you find the video of her house, she, there's a video of her. She's got red hair. 90 she's, cats? That was another cats? one. No, but the cat's name. Oh, you couldn't say the cat. What's the cat's name? Is this the Of course you know the cat's name. Mouse Welcome House. Welcome to the mouse. Oh, my God. That's not her. That's her. That's I call it the Mouse House because some very distinguished uh, mice live here. Uh, Kahneman lives in the kitchen. Taberski lives in the bedroom. This is my shed. Oh, my God. And on that this is side, a joke. Uh, no, I tried to get this books. in. They wouldn't let me. Dude, that wasn't true that detective. That's where the psych serial killer up. lived. On the door are the list of my dogs. Is this a Marky. joke? No. Dude, For this is not this, this the same lady. Spunky, yeah, this is her. Heidi, Tits, <laughs> is Teddy, tits? and Hepburn. The streams and the rivers were dry, and I, it so horrified me that oh I came out and started painting the rocks blue to indicate that there was once a river here. And then after I oh got my. done painting the rocks, I just sort of walked over here and then did that tree and then did that tree and then I did this tree. And then pretty soon I'd done this whole fourth. Although she's voting Democrat 100. Like that's the Democrat voter base is that By the way, Patrick, right let, me, let me flip this. And <laughs> Alina, I'd, I'd, lo I'd love you on this. Let's say, can, can we do a, like a quick case study? Yeah. Okay. You are a criminal defense attorney. Oh. Alina takes a gun and is shooting randomly and wounds, not kills, one of her neighbors. The DA wants to put her away for attempted murder. How would you defend her? You would use every clip and say, my poor client is not mentally capable of standing trial. There's so many of those clips that would say I'm not mentally <laughs> capable. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. As her attorney, what would you do with all this? Well, I mean, literally. That's what I tried to do. I was not allowed Imagine if you're a jury and you just see those two videos. You are you awarding anybody eighty three million dollars? No. Okay. 
I wasn't allowed. So then you got these people on CNN and MSDNC going, Hobba's a terrible lawyer. I couldn't bring it in because the judge wouldn't let me. So, yeah, I had a jury. But the judge, before the jury came in, said, oh, Hobba, you're not bringing that. You're not saying that she has a, uh, uh, what is it, a dog named Vagina? Yeah. Cat named Vagina. Vagina T Fireball. Let's get it right. Vagina T Fireball. Is the cat's name. Is wow. the cat's name. I couldn't. That sounds but like no, trouble. But no, but if you're saying somebody defamed you. If you're saying somebody hurt you, the most terrible, horrific crime, and my case was just defamation. So you're telling me that I can't litigate through the appellate division the first case. That is crazy. Now I have to go on trial for the second case, even though the first case hasn't been determined by the appellate division. Hasn't been overseen, right? So now I got to go on a trial with this verdict that's insane already. And then I got to go in and, and the judge says, Oh, no, he defamed her. And that's why people think she's crazy because of what President Trump said. And I can't play those videos of her mm-hmm. saying rape. Some people would say rape is sexy, whatever she said mm-hmm. on Anderson Cooper and showing Anderson Cooper cutting immediately, probably talking to her during Completely the Completely flummoxed. He's, he's, he's like, he oh, sounded oh. like the lawyer from my cousin Vinny. The, uh, j- 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 he start, he no. turned into that guy. No, And the point I'm <laughs> trying to make for people listening is that if you had a conservative district attorney. Um, we have and to the, take a break. We have to take a quick break because yeah. <laughs> our sponsors wanted us to give a quick shout out to uh, uh, what's v- the, Vagina T. Vagina T. Fireball. <laughs> Fireball. Sorry, Tom. Okay. There you go. You're fast. Brought to you by Petco. VT. <laughs> no, no, it's called PETA. Save this cat. Like, yeah, get, get her away he looks from like he's, he's, uh, Eugene sorry. Carroll. She's begging. He's under duress. Look at his face. I thought PETA was people eat tasty animals. Anyway, I'm confused. <laughs> the, um, no, the, the point I was making was if you had, say, a conservative local district attorney that said, hey, you've shot someone, you wounded them, that's attempted murder, the liberals would come back the other way and say, oh, no, 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 you should let her walk. She was just misunderstood or she's, she's mentally not quite all there and they would use every bit of this Mm -hmm. to let the perp walk you Mm -hmm. you know you know the saddest thing about this whole thing is this is all the stuff that they're doing obviously on purpose obviously it's called cheating not election interference these are all the talking points that whoever's going to run against trump is going to use even though it's all bs they're going to be like january 6 insurrection all the felonies the bloodbath you know the bloodbath thing is going to come back even though we all know it was all bs and then rape and all this these are all talking points that whoever's going to debate way, is going to use he was not found guilty that's of- what i'm saying insurrection for no- none of them you know i mean it's crazy it's crazy and and but more crazy to me more than any of the pr any of the TV stuff, any of the politics, more crazy for me, this shouldn't be happening in courts. Yeah, that's the sad part. This is court. We're not talking about TV land. This is in court. I couldn't play that. So, so long story short, there's nothing else crazy that's going on that they can come after him for money except for criminal cases that we have. Right. Number two, uh, he's going to put up the 175 million has to be in an account like the entire 175 or 10% of the 175. 10% on top of the one. So it's 175, so 17. So 192, whatever, yeah. 195, yeah. exactly. But like an okay. escrow. In a bond. Wow. They, put, they bond it. So the you, whole you 196. The like whole amount. So, mm-hmm. Okay. That's a lot of cash, guys. Yeah. yeah that's a, and that's, by the way, the so just so you guys understand, when they asked for the 500, let's call it, but it really was more like six, seven with the 10% on top, plus the interest, plus whatever. Um, we went to Chubb, the best, of course. brightest uh, insurance carry. You know, they're great. And we say, hey, um, we need this. But they don't do it. There's only seven. The United States Treasury has strict regulations on who can give that large of a bond. OK, there are only, I think, seven or so. Uh, bond companies that are actually qualified to do it. So it's not like, oh, you can just go to the open market and say, who's going to help Trump? It's not about that. You can't just put cash. You have to get a bond. You have to put it up. And they only take cash or cash equivalents. Mar- so you can't have an asset and put a lien on mar lago They won't allow that. So people don't realize in this whole narrative, Trump's broke, Trump's begging for money. Mm, no, not even close. If you look at the regulations in our country, the Treasury regulations, it takes the entire globe of bond people. It cuts it down to seven. Then it cuts it even smaller and says, OK, now you have your seven. But by the way, you actually have to have cash or a cash equivalent. You have to have stocks. You have to have cash. You have to tell me what smart billionaire has a billion dollars sitting in cash in a bank. Not You're one. stupid. You wouldn't be a billionaire. 
You would not be a billionaire. And by the way, President Trump has so much cash, more cash than probably anybody I know. But you are telling me that that's a no. And then they say the whole narrative. He's, I thought he was a billionaire. Yeah, there I we mean, go. It's but it, garbage. But it's, but it's gonna. But they're gonna. And by the way, the the whole Truth Social. Tom, where's the stock at He's today? He's killing it. He's oh, killing it. Truth Social. It's, 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 it. it's sixty six. Everybody said it was gonna pop and drop. Nope, it's staying stable, and it's staying around I seven mean, billion. And his his take is staying right around. Not take his ownership of a company he has built once again. Good. Trump, the entrepreneur, built another company. Yep. Sixty two to sixty six has been the trading range. Sixty three right now. Look at the market. No, no, that's not right, Rob. You're, what company wait, wait. are you on? That's not it, that's, Rob. No, no, no. That's trans. You gotta go to DJ. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. No, he went to DJ. It's not thirty-six billion. Maybe. Go DJ. Well, there's Dow Jones Transportation. You went the DJT stock. DJT. There you go. There we go. Yo, sixty-six. High, that's what yeah. I said. Yep. And today we're at a Up market again. cap of nine point four seven Up billion. Again. Sixty percent of that yeah. is sitting on four billion dollars. Good for him. For anything he can't touches, touch for six months. Anything well, he touches turns to gold. I swear. Well, he's, he really is incredibly bright. That's why they can't stand him. They because hate him. he's bright. Mm -hmm. He's smart. And if you try and censor him on Twitter, he'll just create another company and well, kill it. And he's, about the, I, I don't think people give him enough credit for what a great DJ he is. There you go. Oh, oh my God. DJ DJT yeah. is he, the he, best. He DJ. is uh, amazing. Best he, music. he needs to put that in his resume and go up against <laughs> like David Solomon and say who's a better DJ. And he needs I, to be DJing. But OK, can we can we move away from the story or did you have a question? You had one question you wanted to ask or you're good? Oh, go for it. OK. All right. So let's move on from this story. In other words, at the end of the day, not a lot is going to happen, but it's just a circus. It's a Fluff. great it's a show nuisance. that they're it's doing. Yeah, it's we'll see how the market's going to react to it. Let's go to a different case. Rob, um, John Stewart. OK, John Stewart's story comes out. I think it's a New York Post story. Mm -hmm. Page 11, if you guys want to go to it. OK, so John Stewart found to have overvalued his New York City home, Alina, mm -hmm. by 829 percent. What? Yeah. After labeling Trump's civil case not victimless, John Stewart criticized Trump's civil case over inflated property value, stating this has never been prosecuted. In response to experts framing the case as non-harmful, it was revealed that Stewart's Tribeca duplex sold for $17.5 million in 2014, a staggering 829 percent more than an assessed value at $1.882 million. Internet sleuths uncovered Stewart's property history, leading to accusations of hypocrisy. Stewart's penthouse sale price after exceeded, far exceeded its assessed value, raising questions about his own benefit from overvaluation with political commentator Tim, Tim, Tim Poole alleging, did John Stewart commit fraud when he sold his penthouse for $17.5 million? If, if that's the case... Rob, is this the clip or what? what is this here? This is a clip of Jon Stewart talking about the civil fraud case and how it's not a victimless crime. Go ahead and play this clip, Rob. Because they are not victimless crimes. First, the banks got paid back at lower interest rates. Although, to be honest, who gives a shit? But second, <laughs> money isn't infinite. A loan that goes to the liar doesn't go to someone who's giving a more honest evaluation. So the system becomes incentivized for corruption. And this is part of a different Trump fraud case, but avoiding taxes hurts all of us. Donald Trump shenanigans cost the city of New York. <laughs> and to be honest, and let's be frank here, that is money that the city of New York could have used to build more Walgreens. Now, <laughs> so that's not walks, funny. You can pause right there. Yeah. So oh how God. different is this case versus what they're accusing Trump of doing? I, 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 <laughs> I don't even know where to start with you, it. You almost turned into Anderson Cooper right I almost. I, d d d d d yeah, yeah. I'm uh, so angry by watching that. I actually hadn't seen that. I heard the story. Um, it's no different, but the reality is that Trump actually didn't. If anything, his properties were undervalued. He put Doral at some, a, a, a couple, I don't even remember the numbers, but Doral's worth a, way more than it was on there. I mean, the statements were actually undervalued. And, and. His statements were prepared by an accountant, accounting firm, not a small accounting firm, a major accounting firm who put a cover sheet saying, do your own due diligence, folks. But this is what we estimate we're worth, mm. just like anybody in New York. It, it's like, OK, let's even say in some made up land, the numbers were high, which they weren't. Let's say that. OK. Then you got 
a sheet that says right on the front, excuse me, do your own due diligence. On top of that, who's President Trump going to? Deutsche Bank. He's right. You know what, John Stewart, the only thing that was right, you're right. He went to Deutsche Bank. He didn't go to a mom and pop. He went to one of the highest regulated banks to get to get loans that he actually didn't need. It was solely because of, you know, mortgage. It's what you do. It's how you make money. It's better to have a mortgage sometimes when you don't need it. And they've got paid off early. They made money. OK. And who is the victim now? In his case, I want to see what they do with it. Is he going to be investigated for three years? Where are you, Tish? Yeah. Where are you at? Yeah. You're going to go after your own. No one is above the law. Yeah. Show me. Yep. Exactly. Show me. And by the way, we can help her. If Letitia James is watching. That clip should be used in her case against him. By 100%. the way, let me help you, Letitia. Yeah. You should play that video. I'm sure you'll be allowed to play videos. I'm not, but you will. You know, let's see it happen. Yeah. Let's see. No one is above the law. I, I can't. When I hear that, the hypocrisy in that statement. Uh, uh. Show me. 829% overvalue of his New York City home. And that's a personal profit. Why don't they use the same consumer statute against him like they used against Trump? Is John Stewart actually going to court for this? No, no, not, no, not yet. No, but no. I'm happy to assist. Yeah, gotcha. No, not yet. <laughs> no, no. This is just showing. Assess was 1.88 yeah. or whatever the number, and it sold for 17 or 18 and a half. I think that the, they're saying that was he the got he got yeah. It, it, look, we're highlighting the hypocrisy. Well, it's all hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. It is, and, and it's uh, and again, let's let, double standard. You, you nailed it. And let's talk about John Stewart for a second. He's a shill for the left. Still. Trump derangement syndrome at the highest. He had to come out of retirement just to talk shit about Trump for this year, for election year, because nobody was watching The Daily Show. Wait. Nobody. Let's be honest. Nobody, nobody. watches it. Nobody Period. Watches. And that victim that you're talking about, I mean, don't get me wrong. I hadn't Talented. even seen it. I, I don't watch none of that crap. But uh, that victim, remember the victimless? The victim, John Stewart's victim, Whoever paid uh, yeah, lost $4 million on that deal. Yeah. And you nailed it. Letitia James will help you. He shoots out of New York. The address is on New York 11th <laughs> Ave and 52nd what, what Street. That? That's the what? That's where John the... Stewart's Daily Show, they shoot there. Oh, okay. Go get him. Go get him. So I want, I, at least I want the people to understand, guys. That's it's taxpayer them. dollars. That's okay, them. you want to talk taxpayer dollars? Let's talk taxpayer dollars. Yeah. The Trump organization, Donald Trump, creates thousands of jobs. Yep. Thousands of jobs. They pay hundreds and hundreds of millions in employment taxes mm. to the state of New York. Do you know what you just did, Tish? You are running businesses. The Trump organization that makes the city money, more money than you will ever make in a judgment. Yeah. You are. That's year after year. You're pushing businesses out of the state of New York. The John Stewart's of the world, the talking heads, the silliness, the silliness for politics. You are hurting the state of New York mm -hmm. because people are watching and don't tell who here has not heard from somebody in New York. I'm getting the hell out. Everybody, the majority of the people that I've talked about, well, except for the ones that are in their little bubble that, you know, like uh, Robert De Niro, who, who when, what, when they asked him, like, hey, what's up with this crime? The, the National Guard. He's like, yeah, I, I don't see it yet because you're guarded. Your drivers you're driving guarded there. with people with guns. Yeah. So you don't see it. But again, and, I, and I've been saying this for a while, uh, Alina, until it spreads and it starts hitting them, like with anything, with the open border, until one of their kids, yeah. God forbid, something happens with their kids or their family where an illegal does something to them. Then and their yeah. tune stays the same. But wait until it starts happening to them. No, but even when that happens, they'll somehow blame Trump. Oh, for That's sure. That's what they do. They'll say, that, that, well, Trump didn't finish building the wall. Yeah, well, he why didn't right. he finish building the wall? Yeah. Because you wanted to mess around with an election, bring in millions and millions and millions of people illegally mm -hmm. so that they now let's give them all voting rights and let's give them 10 grand. Oh, yeah. Guess what? I just went overseas last week. I came in and I go, oh, wait a minute. I have to give my passport to customs. Why? Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. I go, why? And are you going to give me a credit card for 10 grand? Mm -hmm. I'd like one. Please. Please. And a phone. And a phone. And I would like somebody to get kicked out of, of a hotel in New York so that I can stay for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, veterans. Which, by the way, leads me to a great story. Oh, boy. Of this governor who's doing a phenomenal job in the great state of Florida, DeSantis, eliminates squatter rights. Yeah. Okay. Gives power to cops to remove offenders because a couple squatters in New York, one guy, Venezuelan, illegal Venezuelan, I believe, is teaching people how to actually go squatting in New York. I don't know if you saw this step by step process on how to do it and how they're protected. And this is what DeSantis does. Governor DeSantis signed legislation into law eliminating squatter rights, stating we are in the state of Florida, ending the squatter scam once and for all. The new law effective July 1st criminalizes squatting and empowers prop, uh, property owners to swiftly remove squatters 
addressing previous challenges where squatters were treated as tenants, requiring lengthy legal battles for eviction. DeSantis highlighted the severity of the issue by comparing Florida's approach to states like California and New York. Rob, do you have the video of him explaining this? Go ahead and play this clip. Does your house belong to you? Or if you are not using it, can someone just come in, squat for a period of time, and then claim that they have a right to be there? This so-called squatter scam is something that's happening around the country. There's even videos telling people how to go in and take over an empty house. Uh, That was never how the law was supposed to work. Uh, And in Florida, uh, we are going to take action today to end this scam and to protect the private property rights of our homeowners. You should not have anyone go on your property and take it over uh, and then try to assert some rights. It's absurd. Uh, We're going to put an end to it today, and we'll be leading the way yet again in the process. The one thing you got to give this guy credit for. Great governor. policies and getting stuff done, like from that stuff, marketing, but the stuff, some of the stuff he does squatting. So you know what this makes you want to do? As a real estate, uh, uh, as an investor, Yeah. like, okay, if I'm going to buy a house, if I'm going to buy properties, if I'm going to rent it out, if I'm going to do something, guess what? Come to Florida. Of course. You don't have to worry about it because yeah. you're in California, God forbid, you M- Moral, a relative director, they had a person living in one of their houses in Valencia. They're like, we can't get some of these people out. What do you mean you can't get the people out? Well, because the law, the way it works, you can't sell it. You have, you have to wait for this. You have to wait for that. Literally, you have to go through that process. I'm glad the fact that he's you doing this what? in Florida. It's true. And and I think there was a sheriff in Florida that actually said something in a press conference and said in the state of Florida, if somebody breaks into your home, you have the right to use a weapon and shoot. Yep. I love that. I'm a Second Amendment girl. So yeah. I love I'm all for that because in the world that we're living in. I hope you're, you're oh, armed and, oh, if and ready. I, if I left my house and somebody, I came back, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call and have them bomb it, like for the termites and while they're in the house. And I have a, <laughs> Rob, can you, the, the, the one of the clips I sent you, uh, if you don't mind, I have a feel good story for everybody at home because I know we, we covered the story of that Venezuelan illegal migrant influencer that was I'm on excited. TikTok making those videos. Remember that guy uh, for squatting? Oh, the motivational maybe, speaker, yeah, amateur lawyer. Guess what? He's now a fugitive after fleeing ICE custody and he posted a snotty, sobbing clip over being threatened by very powerful oh, people, his oh family's God. being in danger, and people looking for where he's staying, and his accounts being look look, look at our friend, look at our boy poor kid, but look at this idiot yeah. <laughs> oh no oh, you can't play this rap no, no, play, yeah, the music no. but he has a booger in his nose like he's crying because now he can't squat the baby situation, they're gonna take the baby away and now he feels threatened for his life so now all that, all those videos that he made where he was like, everybody come here, take advantage. He's in places showing how to, how to steal and not get caught. Well, Good for you. I know Good where he'd you. be nice and safe and comfortable. California? Caracas. Oh, yeah, no <laughs> shit. Get out of here, bro. Yeah, this guy. This is the guy. What did he do? This well, is the guy. So play feel free to use your gun. Oh, let me see this. We don't know what homeowner, which homeowner shot at him. Um, I guess they think that they did something wrong, which they did not. If somebody's breaking in your house, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. We prefer that you do, actually. Um, so, whoever that was, he's my hero. Come see he's us. my hero. We I don't know who you are, are but I would love to meet you. Saturday, that? And you'll okay. take that, you'll shoot a lot better. That's what could, that was, that's no, 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 back, back up 30 seconds, you Pat, know what? See what? the other part of it? If you take a we'll gun see. safety class, listen. Whoever that was, you're not in trouble. Come see you're us. You're not in trouble. We have a gun safety class we put on every other Saturday. And if you take that, you'll shoot a lot better, and hopefully you'll save taxpayers money. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the end. It's in the end. It's in the end. This is where? This is California? Listen, this is Florida. 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 Oh, he's that, uh, you, Santa, Santa Rosa's in Florida. Yeah, Santa Rosa County Sheriff Bob I Johnson. love you, Dude. Sheriff Johnson. Bro, because I'm telling you right now, if people see that video that want to squat, they're going to be like, nah, let's probably not. Let's not do let's that. Let's go to New York. Let's go, let's to, New go York. to New York. Why, why yeah. squat over here? Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but w- what are squatter laws across the country, though? Like, what is the most... I'm, I'm on this Newsweek article from two days ago talking about different squatter laws, you know, by state, Arkansas. In Arkansas, squatters can claim ownership of a property after seven years of occupying it unless it... Uh, it's like an adverse possession, yeah. So you can sit... So it's, it's the same thing. By the way, this is good for people to know. It's like one of those law school things that they teach you. And every state's different. But let's say that you have uh, a fence on your house and your house is actually five acres, but your fence 
in three acres of that five acres. And then your neighbor starts using the two acres that aren't fenced in. It's like adverse. It is adverse possession after a certain amount of time. The years depend on the state. So because you waived your right to effectively protect your space, they could say, hey, I've been using this two acres for the last 11 years. Effectively, it's mine. Oh, wow. And then you're in litigation and all kinds of stuff. So it's really funny. Like, they could do that, but they could come after Trump and take his home in six months. Oh, my right? God. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it literally says that it becomes they must show proof yeah. of their presence of the property, including having made improvements to the, to the property yeah. and paid property tax. The yeah. squatter must not be sharing the property with anyone else. California squatters in Golden State can claim ownership of a property after living there continuously for five years as long as they can. This is this. So there, there's a law and family law. There was and it's pretty much debunked now, but there's. And I'm not a family law attorney. I'll say that. Uh, could you imagine if I was? It'd be hilarious. Um, but it, there is a, a case. There, it's the same thing. If you're in a relationship for a certain amount of time and you're living yes. and acting like you're married, you're effectively married and can get. Let's say you break up. It's like having no prenup, and like, you lose see, half your stuff. That's why oh, isn't that the very in law school they teach you about uh, the actor Lee Marvin and Michelle Triola? Right. I right. think that was the California. And that's right, right, right. why the right thing to do is to create term limits in marriage. And then you <laughs> I got campaign. it. Got it. <laughs> there should be term limits. Okay, you go to the kids, you go to the in-laws, hey, we're running for uh, yeah. second, term. For second term. I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys cut it debate. right now. Let's have a debate. <laughs> oh well, my God, I, that's I, I've hilarious. been re-elected 21 years in a row. I'm undefeated and I, I'm <laughs> campaigning again. So proud of you, man. You're like you're like some <laughs> you're of these uh, senators that stay for 40 years. That's so funny. Right, I'm not well, leaving. Hilarious. <laughs> so well, by, by the way, how they make you you want to talk about squatters the reverse when you're getting divorced. You are not like in New Jersey. I have friends that are getting divorced and they have to stay in the same house as the person they're getting divorced from because the person that leaves could look like they abandoned the property. Oh, my God. Imagine. <laughs> oh, my. God. So now you're getting divorced and you have to stay in the house. And by the way, if I was a governor, I would say we have to document it to make sure you guys are getting along. So record it, vlog it because it's so entertaining. Yeah. Pure entertainment. Yeah. Here's a Johnson family this afternoon at six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> this is my bathroom. I'm not washing your clothes no more. Entertainment. <laughs> yeah. yeah no dinner for you. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so funny. This I is want to why stay I left married, you. Just like Joe Biden to the end, till I end my marriage, drooling down a flight of stairs. And you're on the way. That's it. Well, listen, Tom, we're proud of you, buddy. So, okay. All right. So, let's see what we got here. Next story to go to, Rob. Let's go through Ronna McDaniel. Uh, interesting mm -hmm. things going on there with Ronna McDaniel. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, she's a sweetheart. A lot of people are. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, it, what what Vivek did with her was uh, oh. uh, legendary oh. at one of these uh, the debates. The of the Republican However, Party. However, so she it. comes in, NBC gives her a contract. I think it's 200, it's, what is it, Tom? It's 300? 300 for two years. And let me let me read the contract so you, you kind of get an idea, and then you'll see what some people are talking about it. The, the people at NBC lost their minds coming together saying, we got to get rid of her. There's no way she should have a job here. Ronna McDonald expected to be paid out for her $600,000 NBC contract oh, wow. uh, fully to be paid by NBC for being dropped after just four days of announcing uh, she was joining the network as a political contributor. The ex-RNC chair's contract was $300,000 a year for two years. Political reported with her uh, loan appearance on NBC's Meet the Press on Sunday that lasted less than 20 minutes. That amounts to $30,000 a minute. She made $500 a second. Holy McDaniel has snap. not spoken publicly They're about her short-lived tenure since the announcement on Tuesday evening from NBC that she was being dropped. But political reports that she is lawyering up and spoke with Brian Friedman on Tuesday about her legal options even beyond recording the money from her original contract. Rob, do you have a couple new videos of, based on some of the reactions people are having? Go ahead and play this one. Here's Joy Reid and Rachel Maddow. Our chairman of the of the NBC Universal News Group, Cesar Conde, uh, who we both know very well, um, he sent a memo that we all got as employees here uh, rescinding the hiring of Ronna Romney McDaniel. And I know I felt very strongly about it. I know you felt very strongly about it. I think everyone from four o'clock on from Nicole all the way to midnight, we all felt very strongly and said so on our <laughs> respective shows uh, yesterday. And I, I just have to say, when somebody does the right thing, I feel like it should be acknowledged as publicly as we acknowledged our outrage. And so I, I know how I feel about it. I am grateful to Caesar for actually making the right decision. I think it was the right decision, but I want to get your take as well. Oh, well, thank you for asking me about it. I, I still feel <laughs> like, I still, I still feel like a little 
it, it always feels wrong to talk about things, you know, in the company Agreed. as if it's news. And, I, you know, it's just this, it's yeah, not the way either it is you wrong. or I are, are wired, <laughs> I know. But I, I will just say that journalists are a fractious bunch. And in our big company with all sorts of different journalistic entities, you have all sorts of different people working in this business, doing all sorts of different kinds of work. And to see the essentially unanimous feeling among all the journalists in this building and all the senior staff and all the producers and everybody in this building about this was one thing. But then to see the executives and the leadership hear that and respond to it and be willing to change course oh, based on it, based on called a coup. their respect you for us. It's called a right coup, there. and you should be ashamed of yourself if you run that and company. And that's why you're an echo exactly. chamber. Exactly. Yeah. And that's also why your rating sucks. Yeah, and by the way, like, yeah. and listen, and Ronald McDaniel, I can care less. I mean, just going up, Vivek said, and we were there, I'm sick and tired of this Republican establishment that has made us the party of losers. All right, where's the accountability? Ronald McDaniel, since she was in, he goes, losing 2018, 2020, 2022, 2023. It almost seems like, to me, I'm always that guy looking you know, from a different angle, it's almost as if they wanted Alina. I know Adam. We talked about this last week. Like they were like Alina. They put like, "Hey, Ronnie, go in there and just lose your ass off. Make them lose, lose, lose. And when you're done, we'll give you a job. We'll give you a job at MSNBC. We'll give you six hundred thousand dollars." And guess what happened? The employee said, "Whoa, you guys didn't run that shit by us." Because at the end of the day, yeah. anything different than these two or Chuck Todd, I would love to see that. It would have been a change. Yeah, but they're threatened by that. Oh, so one thousand yeah. percent. I want to hear another person. At least give us a new face. Like, have you? Be honest. Have you ever sat and heard uh, Rachel Maddow for her whole segment? It's. No excruciate. I try five, to five days a week. I'm by the way, that's do, a, it's called mental toughness. That's how you, <laughs> you say, people, great take, people take if you can do it, yeah. you're gonna be mentally tough. Oh my god, wait a minute. You know, and I heard this like, you know, the terrorists that we catch and we want to find out if they have information. The hell with torturing them, just tie them up, play MSNBC, Rachel Maddow. They will spill all the they'll be like, just don't turn play it off. Yeah, but Please. they like that stuff because that's how they got in. Oh, and they yeah. got a check. Yeah, no, shit. The, Ugh. the, the reality it's is standard. Ronald McDaniel is now the poster child for being politically homeless. Adam, yeah. first of so, all, your yeah. voice is already bad, and you're distancing yourself from the mic. Like, get okay. closer yeah. to the Poor mic Adam. guy. I'm trying to respect the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Get close to the mic. <laughs> Ronald McDaniel is the poster child for being politically homeless at this point. She's got nowhere to go. She's not going to go to the left. She's not going to the right. Well, that's what it used Trump to be. Liz it. Cheney. It used it's to be Adam Kissinger. She's what is it? She's in nowhere. She's in nowhere. Exactly. Right now. And that's just that's, that's sort of symbolic of where we're at in politics. You're either far left in the Bernie camp, or on the right with MAGA with Trump, or you're done. Yeah. So what is she like? What do you what, like? Because she, obviously she wants to work. She want, What do you do? She now? does nothing. At the what point. do you do now? She becomes a lobbyist. Yeah, probably that's it. Well, I mean, she just made six hundred grand, bro. Yeah. For uh, how long was she on there? For half an hour? 20 minutes. 20 30 grand. Minutes. Well, if she got paid out. Well, look, there's a well-worn right. path. The well-worn path is at the end of an administration or when you leave your job in government, and it doesn't matter whether you're working for Republicans or, or Democrats, there's a path that's a well-worn path mm -hmm. that goes to New York, and you either go to book publishers or you become a commentator. It's there. Jen Psaki's got her show. They all go there to continue to spout mm -hmm. you know, their, their, their drivel or to write a book that's got a tell-all of some juicy encounters with and then we have to be sexual about some lobbyists did this, we did this, legislation yeah. was this. And that's the game that's played. And Caesar Conde is the guy that was running the nonprofit inside of a cable company called MSNBC. And he was attempting to hire somebody to diversify and to get um, something that he doesn't have right now, ratings. And guess what? It backfired because the inmates are running the asylum that's and now 100%. the employees are saying no, 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 you don't get to hire that guy. We're all upset about it. And I think most of them, I think the word that was used here was threatened I think they were threatened. They don't. They know the conservative views or anything that's on the conservative side tends to get ratings. So it is. It is a threat to them, despite. But it's Ronald both McDonald's sides, Tom. Flaws. But it's both sides, Tom. But it's both sides. Let me explain to you. The right is the same way as well. I agree. Yeah, it, 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 some of the podcasters. When we announced Cuomo's uh, joining the crew, right? Oh my God! You know, you, I can't believe it though. Mm -hmm. Biggest, huge, f up, you know, the I'm unsubscribing, yeah, leaving. To and, totally, and guess yeah. what happened? The next live w was the biggest ever, and the next live, and the next live, and yeah. just us, how home team, yeah. like, mm. you know, this Tuesday was the biggest live uh, on YouTube worldwide, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So sometimes when you make a decision, you make a decision knowing there's going to be some 
But that, back, that backlash. makes noise. Yeah. I mean, noise Guess is what? Good. You're a leader. Stand up for yourself. You, yeah. you, you're worried about people bitching about kids. So guess who's running the, what's that saying? The, the in my, inmates, inmates are running, are running the, the asylum. asylum. Right. I mean, that's NBC right 1, now. 1,000%. NBC NBC's being ran by the inmates, and you're afraid because you brought in Ronna McDaniels. By the way, it's the perfect person they brought in. She was ready to throw Trump under the bus like it's the ideal Republican you were bringing in. And I'm not saying she like was going to throw— view, the, view, the view girl that they brought in. Is, oh, it, but the point being is yeah. it was a perfect person for I them. I think so. It's an establishment Republican that was coming in. Keep her. It's going to be very hard to find— you know, somebody like that has coming in from being the RNC chair. But that's, I actually think this is a loss for NBC, and it's a bad look for the leaders at the top of NBC. I think so. And who's, who's the CEO of uh, MSNBC, Rashida Jones? Who is it? Who's, the, who's right. the CEO? No, she said, it's Cesar Conde is the guy who leads the whole thing. But who's the, C, who's think, the CEO? I, I've heard that name. I think she may be the news division executive yeah, like, okay. vice president or something. So basically, so can you, that Tom, that's like, think about this. That's like. Patrick bringing Cuomo, me, you, and Adam going on our own podcast <laughs> and going, what the hell is no, wrong not on with your pa- own podcast. I would on love his for podcast. you guys to do it. I should have done one of those. Hi, guys. Late I would breaking. love it. What the F is Patrick doing? He got Cuomo? <laughs> what? I know Pat's head would just it would come into the scene. Like, Hi, Patrick. Like, and you nailed it. Like, what kind of what kind of CEO <laughs> no, you are you? No, no, no. And the shit. next day, and the next day, you're at Starbucks talking to someone saying, would you like non-fat milk? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, I look like the guy that was on there that's not me I'm why not is Vinny at starbucks now oh, yeah well his... guy, guy uh pulls me aside i'm in st augustine he says are you, do people ever tell you look like patrick but david i, I get said, that all, all the time, time. Do you, do you, do you, <laughs> does anybody ever tell you you look, look like, like trump little... sawyer i go oh my god i hear that <laughs> all the time <laughs> by the way half the time i'm in like a home goods and i don't want people yeah, to know yeah, of course all. yeah you yeah. know what i can't stand her did you see what she oh, yeah. did the other day with yeah yeah you what a little, kind of by the way, you want me to tell you what happened to me yesterday i was in a store and somebody said to me um i heard the girls over in the corner saying you're on on the news a lot what news station and i said if you're asking me that you're I not want to know that's so funny <laughs> that's and she goes right what news yeah. i said fox and she goes oh you're right. And I was oh, like, bye uh, now. Bye bye. Bye <laughs> bye. Yeah, bye. Go watch the view. Go Although watch the fairness, view. in fairness, I go on CNN. I do. I do. No, I do. go. I'm yeah. not afraid of the other. I yeah. like, I think that's, by the way, where we need to be heard. Would There's you no love, question. would you love to be on the view for an episode? Like if they were just like, hey, I mean, they would never I have ever said on that. national television, yeah. they've played clips of them talking about me. And I've said this on, I think I was on Hannity or somebody and they played a clip and I was like, where's my invite? Yeah. I would love to see their audience. Yeah, I wish the camera so flipped once just to see the audience yeah. of The View. Oh, my God. Imagine what that bunch Rachel like. Maddow's never invited me. No, of course not. And you want, what a great point. Kaylin Collins has. She has. Yeah. And I've gone on with CNN. her. Yeah. And we had a really respectful conversation. And, you know, and then, of course, she invites, you know, an ex-Trumper to talk about me and be nasty. But... Yeah. I, I think that that's what's missing in our country. I think so, too. And, totally agree. I know, I mean, why no, can't you just talk? Yep. You know, stop talking about me. Talk to me. Yep. I, I'm clearly available. Yep. Sit there. Talk to me and talk about it. Let's talk about it. We don't have to be on the same yep. side, but we don't have to bash. Yeah. yeah. Could Echo you chambers it? are killing our country. Well, because if you notice this, talk I think, to each other. Pat, you did a shout out for, for somebody. You challenged somebody. When when have you ever seen a Rachel Maddow, Joy Reid, um uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Joy Bihar, have they ever left their little room, their little audience, and come to talk to somebody different? How about get the hell do out of there? Do it in a respectful way. Are you capable of They can't that. do they it. Can't. They would never do it because guess what? They don't have an audience that's told when to applaud, told when to ooh, because they, they would have no argument. Because by the way, I watched a clip. Joy Bihar is talking to the guests, but she's reading a teleprompter or something on the side. It's not you. You're just a mouthpiece. And you nailed it. If we can't have that conversation, that dialogue, you're just there because Joy Reid got caught too. Remember that time where they cut to and she's like another effing war. Yeah. She doesn't. She doesn't even believe it. She's doing it for the money. Yeah. And you, what's you your know, price? They they figured it out, Vinny. They figured it out because if you go back twelve years ago, they used to invite Ann Coulter on, and Ann Coulter would kick people's asses. And so they sat back there. Okay, strong, educated woman who's highly professional. Maybe we don't want this girl on here kicking the oh, ass Dana of our Bash. host. Me Dana. on Dana Bash. Did you mm-hmm. see the clip of me with Dana Bash? 
I have to look at it. Oh, like, I want to see it. Rob. Oh, <laughs> is it good? Oh, how long? How long is it? Is that it's moment? not that long? But it, she was bringing up things from 20. Oh, this one's fantastic. I went oh, crazy. It, I love how you ended it. it what? Have you seen? Please, you do we talking? see it? Is that okay? Zoom in. Watch this. Oh, I love the beast fire. mode. Beast mode. Yeah. Oh, no, we got music. Has music. Mm. Well, you, she You'll was asking me about. The women that came out of the woodwork from 2016. Yeah. This was like last, right before the Carol case or something. I'm like, Look wait, I'm that. sorry. What are you talking about? Yeah. Right it hit me. I was like, that's the desperation. And I just went oh, ham. Oh, ham on her? Ham. I And and by the way, who cares? Yeah. Like, that's what you have to do. Which, which you one can't is play those games with me. Oh, it's they, not right. And it's it's just not right. They probably don't even have it on there. In you a bash? No, they won't. They probably, no. That's funny. They didn't even have they it They literally there. flipped out. They flipped out. They were like, we can't have Hobbo on CNN. <laughs> <laughs> Get her there the it hell is. out of here. Yeah, you there got it the is. producer there. in her ear. Commercial, commercial, commercial. Cut to commercial. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah like they're Anderson they're Cooper with, with the rapist. I mean, there it is. Is that it, Rob? That's it. That's it. Yes. Well, don't let's not watch the ad. But what, so for something like that, Lena, they, they they reach out to you and they're like, hey, we want you to come talk to her. Yeah, I don't reach out to people. Yeah, you, you don't, I don't reach out to yeah, people. What are you they talking reach out to about? Me. Oh, this no, is it. This you is it. feel completely comfortable with the fact that the um, the the money, <laughs> some of the money that President Trump has used in his defense comes from political donations, and that you believe that that is different. You have to go to the women from part. a donation the that women is given the women by part. Oh, the, uh, where she starts asking me about women. Opera- case for the first yeah, case back. that she brought. Uh, You'll see facial reactions yeah. from Alina. Keep Alina's, going. <laughs> I, Alina's, I don't you're have a poker face. You're going to see, you're see smoke this coming out of her trial. ears, then and, stop. Um, this was uh, specifically about uh, sexual my, assault today and go. defamation. Okay. Before I let you go. That's right. It was money. My, yeah. My, my, <laughs> my final question to you is, I mentioned that there are 15 women there you go. altogether who have alleged that Trump uh, sexually harassed or assaulted <laughs> them. EG. Are you concerned that more Are we talking of this... about 2016? Hold on, hold on. Are you concerned I have that... not gotten all told, a complaint from all told, 15 women? All told. That, not that you've gotten complaints. That have, come pub- that have become public. Are you concerned that this <laughs> Since case 20, that Are you talking today, about 2016? Is that the desperation concerned? that we're at right are now? You concer- <laughs> are you concerned that the case that we saw today, that it is maybe just the beginning, that other Look, criminal great, action could be in the future? No, no, no I think all. you're concerned that he's going to win, which is why you're bringing up 2016 things, because you have nothing to bring up. That's what I think you're concerned. And you should be concerned. He's leading the polls. Okay, because you have nothing to bring up. That's what I think you're concerned. And you should be concerned. He's leading in the polls. Okay. I'm a journalist. I am not concerned about anything. I'm yeah, you asking are. you, oh, yes, you yeah, as you one of his attorneys, about things that are out there. Okay. And in addition to what you <laughs> Since uh, are, are here to talk about. Is that what we're talking about? I'm Great. Not, are you talking about 20, are, Give me a year. These 15 women. Are we talking about 2016 when he was running and almost won and then did win? It is. It, it is not relevant. <laughs> what, well, it's not yeah. relevant. Yeah. It's yeah. relevant. No, you it's just not. Asked me about 15 women. I don't have yes. 15 women that have come forth with a claim. Okay. Where are they? Yeah. Okay. I don't Look have them. She lost. I didn't You're say that they came. I didn't say that they came forward with a claim. I said that they have made no, public did. statements. I said they have made public statements. And my question was, are you concerned you about this? you have nothing okay. 2024. Thank you. Thank no. you for your time. You know, I, I wish you could just go into her screen. And, uh, she goes, thank you for your I time. I hope to yeah. talk thank soon you. because yeah, I, there's a lot more to discuss as you go so. on with your appeal. Yeah. Hope so. As soon as I have not been invited back. <laughs> I, would, I would pay to but see what she said about you right when the camera stopped. Yeah. Vinny, like, Vinny. get that. Look at, look at Dana Bash. That is an example of a journalist that half of that, she didn't want to be there. She didn't. She, she's on a she's segment reading. and she's sensing where this is going and she does not want to continue the line of questioning. Yeah. She's got the teleprompter. She's got the thing in her ear. She's not a, a journalist. She's a talking head. And that's the segment they were going to run. Let's transition. Can, let's, yeah. um, let's, let's leave her alone. Let's leave Bash. She's you got Bash. time right now. Give her some space. <laughs> got Bash. So next, uh, did you guys hear about the announcement? The, the, uh, Nickelodeon new CEO. Did you hear about this? Like out of no. every Everybody that could have hired as a new, did you hear about no, this? No, this isn't breaking news. Or go ahead, Rob, play the play the Nickelodeon's. No, it's not Diddy. <laughs> Nickelodeon oh, just what? announced what? Diddy hired as a new president of Nickelodeon Studios, according to Babylon Beat. <laughs> 
which, <laughs> which by the way, oh my God, that's very terrible. strategic. Why would Nickelodeon hire Disneyland. a Diddy at a time like this? That's kind of weird. <laughs> well, maybe he needs to pay for a legal defense fund. Or maybe it's a satire Babylon website a satire. for the people yeah, that are just freaking say, out it's right Babylon now. Babylon B. By the way, it's funny. Honestly, they do funny stuff. This is this is uh, you know obviously. It, there's nothing funny about what Nickelodeon no. did with Schneider, mm -hmm. nothing. And there's nothing funny about what he's doing. But what a interesting angle for Babylon B to take the story to say that Diddy's not going there. Not let, I, let I, me, I don't even know if that's a current picture. No, it's the foot of, of Diddy. Oh. There was a more updated picture. Yeah, of him we'll, recently. We'll, 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 <laughs> there he is. <laughs> that's the updated photo of Diddy. That's you I don't know if you that? saw that. A recently. Antonio Brown posted Listen, that. No, he guys. didn't. Antonio Brown posted and who? Antonio? There's no way Antonio Brown posted that. AB posted Can that. Can you go to his Twitter? I, go I want to see. Oh my Are you oh saying that AB, God. AB would never post Liberty. a picture Liberty like that? City. Well, Chris from Value Take, Chris is like, Vinny, uh, he sent me this and said, uh, There's no way he posted that. Um, keep going. I believe he did. <laughs> I believe he did. <laughs> Show, show. Okay. <laughs> Can we? By the way, wait, directed wait, wait. directed by yeah. Dan Schneider. <laughs> you don't oh, understand. Yeah, I didn't see that. Pat, Pat, Pat. The soundtrack Pat. is by. What was the soundtrack by? Art Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my. Can we address? No, no, no. It's just a parody. The lawyer is it's quiet. It's just a parody. Like, I'm no. not getting sued yeah, for defamation. You guys are going can, down alone. Let's, let's keep. Can going. we address some of the legal? <laughs> Allegations on this? Is this something that we can even? Is that where you're going? Uh, yeah, I'd like to know Go trafficking. From, a, from a legal standpoint. Trafficking. What this case is even looking like? Have they even arrested Diddy yet? What's what? Like, I know you're not handling this case whatsoever. No. But everybody is talking about this. It's yeah. nonstop. Yeah. Here we go. These two uh, step brothers are out here. Oh, um, from a legal standpoint, uh, what does this look like? The so, raid, FBI. So, I mean, you know, you're asking me about a raid when I've seen raids happen to my clients that mm -hmm. have no business happening. I understand that there was a plane um, with one of his, uh, they called it his, dr his drug mm -hmm. runner, his 25 year old kid. Going to Antigua. Um, he was arrested. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know that. I know that obviously there are accusations of trafficking. And you've seen a lot of reels been coming up about, yeah, that's his, uh, that, that gentleman was arrested. Um, his drug mule. Drug mule, exactly. And, um, you know, his, his homes were raided. Obviously, he wasn't arrested. He was um, on a plane, I believe, somewhere near St. Bart's or in the Caribbean somewhere. And he uh, was able to leave the country. Obviously, there's no warrants out for his arrest. We would know about that. So something is going on. Um, do I necessarily believe everything I see? No, I'm, I've gotten a bit past that in the past three years. So we'll wait and see. And I think everybody has a right to have a, their day in court. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I, I, you know, you don't know, you know, you don't know. And by the way, I'm still waiting on the list from Epstein. How crazy. And how, wait, I, you know what I'm looking, I'm waiting for show us one minute from one of the cameras that he had in his house. Just one of them, because uh, a, a report came out yesterday that uh, somebody showed a little camera when they did the FBI raid. They were everywhere in the house. But that's little what they camera. do. That's what they do to so blackmail you. I saw, I saw it in, um, with Trump, with Mar-a-Lago. Um, and I was with the president when that raid happened. I was with him in New York. Oh, wow. And uh, I, I was sitting there when we got the call that your home is currently being raided. raided. And over documents, over doc, over documents. And he had a right to have that Biden didn't. Mm -hmm. OK, so so we're sitting here watching this hypocrisy. And and I have to say, you don't know. You know, he he I never know. You know, he had an ex-girlfriend, I think, that was upset or ex-fiance. She made accusations. They obviously have to do what they have to do to investigate those. Those are serious crimes, sex trafficking, real sex trafficking, anything with minors. I have no tolerance mm -hmm. for. Um, are you talking about so. Cassie? Yeah. yeah okay. I just want to show you two clips. Here's Usher on Howard uh, Stern. Uh, Howard Stern. Rob, how long is a clip that you have? Is this when he asks him about uh, yeah, puppy this is flavor it. camp? Yeah, yeah. go ahead and play this. Watch it's it. It's about a minute, right? Yeah. Okay. Wait till the end, though. To New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor He's 13 at the time. Adam, Flavor let us hear it. Go back yeah, five seconds, what please. Go back, because what, what he called it right there is what's key. Go ahead. 
That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn <laughs> some... Flavor Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's In pre- the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. Not I mean, really. But, I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was... And it was <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at it was it was 13 wild. so nobody old. tried to you know some woman didn't come along i didn't say that what i did say is that there were very curious things yeah, taking that's place called uh-huh. and i didn't necessarily understand when well, you're 13 uh-huh. biggie smalls was there biggie smalls was there lil kim craig mack all know, these people all are hanging these, around all, yeah man faith evans Jodeci, and your Mary okay? J. Blige. Yeah, good they job. They about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? You're 13. Did you have to doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, are they keep you doing humble ditty. somewhat? So or crazy. are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. And, I, and what kind do you, you have money? Money? Okay. How is that normal? Like, how have, is that normal at you, any time? Do you have the part where they said... Would you let your kids go there? He goes, oh, keep playing. hell no. Keep playing it, Rob, because I think it's at the end. Yeah. Per diem. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, had, I had like, yeah, you know, like a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> hell no. <laughs> See? Yeah, what? that's the thing. Right? I have kids. I don't even post. And then, uh, you know, the Twitter trolls will be, where, where are her kids? Well, I'm protecting them. And, yeah. and, and this is sad. I mean, this is sad. And this one with Bieber. This is the, the Bieber thing. one. Yeah. Like, where are the parents? Yeah. And what, yeah, well, which parent would say, you know what? We don't know you. We know that you're a celebrity. Go and hang out with this guy for weeks on end by yourself. And at what mm-hmm. time, at what era is this cool? In the most critical years, by yeah, the way. Yeah, exactly. How is this, Alina? They I both this turn. How is this normal? So they both big. turn into superstars. Yeah. That's the sacrifice yeah, well, you make. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the sacrifice. But one of them had to go to church and he freaking lost his mind. Can you play this one? How is this normal? He's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, like, like you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but, um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. What the? Um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. I'm signed to Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when, you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and yeah. And, Jesus. Um, and, 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 and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. We going crazy. What? Like, uh, That's disturbing, by the way. Why? That's what? disturbing. What? what does that have to do with making music? Yeah. That's Absolutely. Who is this guy, Rob? Who is the girl? Um, I believe this is a former dancer of Diddy's who talks, she doesn't give specifics, but she talks about some of the things that she witnessed while she was there. Play the clip. Oh, yeah. You know, we all have stories. Seriously, we all have stories. Mine is horrific, and only five people know it. Well, you're about to be called and as a I witness. And I probably will so. never tell it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, you're about to get subpoenaed. Since yeah. then, I've been like, <laughs> really? yeah. Oh, yeah, and she's I also gone. am very she's intimately gone. aware that you tell your truth, and you become victimized over and over and over and over and over and over. And mind you, I then interviewed him many times. <laughs> There's, I have a lot of stories, y'all. I've been in Hollywood for 25 years, maybe longer, 30. I got a lot of stories. Unfortunately, um, maybe I'll write a book one day. Oh. But it just is so traumatizing that women just want to live every day and feel safe. And when we revisit and revisit, we live in a state of victimhood. And nobody wants to live there. So for those of you who are like, why didn't you say something then? Because we just want to live. We want to be happy. And we really want to forget the trauma. So... There's that. Well, She's there, not gonna be called. Diddy made a statement um, recently. Diddy's lawyer made a statement. Or this Diddy is something that statement. Diddy wrote right prior to everything was going on. He called it a witch hunt. I think. Yeah, he called it a witch hunt. Yeah. Vinny, you want to read this? 
Uh, yeah, uh, for the last couple of weeks, and Rob, I just sent you something too, if you could please show that. For the last couple of weeks, I've said silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me, my individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth, Sean Diddy Combs. Now, this came out, Joy Reid, MSNBC. Uh, this guy said one of his friends was an intern, and look what Diddy said for him to get the intern turn job. Check this out. This, I saw this last night. Disturbed many years ago. Okay. I, I, I know this man well enough to call him and say, Hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might've been 10, 12 years ago that I call him and say, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Did he talk about Diddy? Uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And Here I, and he said, yes. And they were flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? He wouldn't yeah. say. And years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh, and the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh. Like, like think about it. Diddy's calling. The, Diddy said, listen, you want this job? Come, let's hook up, and then you can get the job. And the guy said no. Like, I, I think it's, when are we going to stop pretending that Hollywood, the music industry, all these people from Epstein, it's not a, like, it's not a secret, but we all kind of just, eh, like, we brush it away. Mace it's a is, real serious Mace problem. is being interviewed. Rob, just check to see if there's audio music in it or no. This is Mace? Uh, uh, if you can check. Real Where the hell has he been? Music. Oh God, Mace. He's, he's, so check this out. So Mace, this is Mace cool. in 2002. Okay. He steps away. From He's the guy that stepped away, and mm -hmm. look what he says in this interview. This is 22 years ago. Go. And by the way, Mace is an OG, OG oh, guy. OG in church. He went to church. Yeah. All is well. When I'm... Have you spoken to Puff lately? Do y'all talk or what? Well, actually, we not we not really on speaking terms, but you know, I still pray for the dude, and okay. I pray that all is well with him. Okay. Well, Pete, Watch he's this. supposed to be releasing a gospel album. What what came to your mind when you when you when you? When you heard that, what, what, what thoughts did you have? Y'all want me to answer that? I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, can RuPaul put out a gospel album? Can you imagine? Wow. But don't you think that everybody wow. can express themselves? Definitely. And, and if he, mm -hmm. I mean, he they can. You ask me, I'm just okay. answering. Wow. Actually, can RuPaul create a gospel item. He's basically saying a gay, a gay man, can he put out and something? And Mace is not a, 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 a pushover, lightweight guy. This oh, guy, no. Yeah, wow. so. I actually played basketball with Mace a couple years ago. I was like, oh, what, what are you up to these days? It's like, just with my kids and God, man. Just my kids and God. I was like, good, good. for you, bro. Uh, Rob, I, I don't know if we can play that. That TikTok thing we talked about with a guy, it's like a proce procession of I told this was about to happen. I told it this was about to happen. I told this was about oh, to yeah, happen. Yeah, the one. Story and story and story and story. Look, innocent until proven guilty. We get it. Something's fishy out here with Diddy. Yeah. We all know that. No, More than fishy. What do you mean? Yeah. It's in the ocean and there's fish on you. What are you talking about? <laughs> fishy. Jaws out here. Like, and again, why would you stop saying fishy? It's there. Like Epstein exposed Epstein got caught and they suicided him in jail. Let's stop pretending this game. Diddy, and I'm tired of hearing the oh, if there's smoke, there's fire. The house has burned to the ground, bro. How many more people is it gonna take to be like, okay, he actually I, I was molested or raped. I don't understand why he wasn't arrested. That's what I'm saying. What, what are we talking about? If, if that's truly, if they had enough to go raid the home or, you know, we'll see what comes now. So yeah. they arrested people, they raided the home, we'll see what they found and then, you know, what it is. Yeah. Other, well, is who there knows what they're looking for, pedophilia. Exactly. Or like, is there a warrant for him? Because well, we you have, have to get, you have to go to a judge and, and there's an emergent judge for these kinds of things. And you say, look, we've done an investigation. We've interviewed these people in a special proceeding or, or a grand jury, and we have reason to believe X, Y, Z. We would like to uh, go raid. Mm -hmm. And then the judge signs off on it. So there yeah. is a procedure for that. So, but, but, and I'm so confused because, like, for instance, the Cassie thing, right? She comes out. She does all these depositions. She does all these things. Mm -hmm. And we see she's written it. It's, she's deposed whatever uh, affidavit she signed. And she's like, they, they drugged me, they raped me, yeah. they did all this. Where's these are, the DA? These are crimes, Where's right? Where's the DA? How, and, and money just shuts it and it goes away? No, no, pay her, but you have to do time. 
You have to come and face the legal ramifications for drugging and raping yeah. women. And God Minus. knows what he's doing with kids. How does that work? Yeah. Do you- I got a video that I, I, I you know, obviously we're not going to play this video. Okay. Well, but the, not the I'm, not, audio one, no, no, please. Not. Of course, yeah. we're not going to play but this video. Did you get this one working, by the so way, Rob? The, the video okay. that uh, there's this video with the audio of a security guy says, I don't drink champagne because he always uh, uh, Spike spikes it. the champagne mm. and All there's things guys are... pass out and then well, boom. They, yeah. And he says, <laughs> seriously, he I says, I never want to see that vision from you again. <laughs> yeah. And then boom. And then boom. boom. But he, oh, this, boom this guy who is in the room, uh, allegedly, it's, it's, I think it's me that you can, the video is audio recording. It's the audio yeah. recording and he's, Putting it out on TikTok, it's gone viral. It's pretty fun. I'm not going to play that clip, but go ahead and play this oh, clip, Rob. This is when? This is uh, December 14, 2023. Go ahead. But there's multiple videos. Just play one of them. The first one, Rob. Go ahead. Some storages or some of Puffy Properties be getting raided real soon. This is three months ago. Us. Mm-hmm. They need to get to those tapes. Oh, wow. They get one of those tapes. Yep. But him with those little people that have been making the accusations. Little people. Woo. Man. <laughs> Done. <laughs> but Puffy, the type here, he'll blow his brains out. Jeez, guarantee holy you. shit! <laughs> or do like he did on that that court screw uh, uh, lie. How he did. The next thing that's going to be happening, and uh, after this, is now you're going to start seeing some criminal investigations getting opened. Psychic. And uh, because. When you get too much of the smoke, uh, law enforcement generally gets involved. So that would be the next thing that will be happening to, to Puffy, unfortunately. For his sake, y- y'all know, I'm one that believes if you ain't getting psychological help, getting some type of help. You can pause right so, 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 so let, me, let me ask you guys a question. So th- there's a couple of things happening. When he's talking about, and this was in, what, what month was it, Rob? Th- February. Th- so it's January, February, and March. So January. He's like, he's predicting, which uh, apparently he's oh, psychic. He, he, he does multiple predictions yeah, yeah. up until the actual rate. Yeah, he's obviously a cooperating witness. Yeah, oh, for sure. He's for not sure. predicting. So what does he's that mean, cooperating witness? Meaning? He's talking to the feds. Yeah. Okay. He's a fed. Yeah. yeah he's there's wor- no question that guy's going to be on the stage. So, or, so or, you know, he's not, he doesn't have ESP. The guy clearly <laughs> right. was yeah. working with the government. Yeah. yeah. And... It's not but, Nostradamus. He yeah, has yeah. a deal. Yeah. But, but, but so there's two things, though. When they're saying that they're looking for those tapes, he could be talking about, obviously, the law, law enforcement, the Department of Justice. I, he, he could also be talking about what about the powers that be? Because the powers that be that killed Jeffrey Epstein, and I'm going to say they killed Jeffrey Epstein. Imagine those phone calls, Alina, where they're like, you pick up the phone. It's like, hey, listen, this is going to come out. They're going to he's going to jail. He's arrested. He's in prison. We got to we have to. He's going to talk because we have the footage. What do we do with him? How much of an option? Like, what's the percentage you guys would put that the powers that be, the real people that are on the stage? Mind you. Like the Boeing guy. Did you hear about the Boeing Boeing whistleblower? Yeah, the guy that was so overwhelmed by exposing them, he shot himself in his head in his car. After telling friends and family, I would never kill myself. There's a weird trend going around where when you speak the truth. We're interviewing the lawyer in two and a half hours. Oh, Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. One one lawyer? Yeah, we're wow. interviewing the main lawyer in two and a half hours. Are but you suicidal? No. I'm you feel curious. good. No, I'm no. not suicidal. Either. I'm not no, suicidal. No. I love my life. Me too. I love my life. Tom, Me you too, love your life? Very much so. Okay, good. <laughs> we're all in agreement on this. Everybody loves life. Thank you. I love life. life. We life. We Rob, love life. Rob, you say it too, Rob. Rob, say it. Put I your pants up. Okay, there we go. We're all good. That's good. By the way, the whole Baltimore Bridge thing, and then let's wrap up with with the last Baltimore Bridge thing. It's it's a little weird stuff that's going on. Yeah. You know the. <laughs> do you have the video, Rob? Do you have the video that Scary. it keeps backing up, moving, backing up, moving, backing up, moving at one thirty in the morning, and then eventually until it's like straight. Ah, yeah. bang, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a video game where you didn't know how to park. <laughs> it's like it's me a, driving. Oh, it was an accident. <laughs> you can ask my friend. This is, they it, won't it, get in the car with yeah. me. They're like, if Alina was like, right. What? Right. And I like fast cars. It's oh, not good. God. Me not too. Me too. Love fast cars.
Go ahead, Rob. Is this so the this one? is sped up. So looks, look, okay, let me back up. I'm not direct on it yet. Coming right. Look, boom, bro. Oh, that's how it happened. Yeah. Yes, Adam. That's sped up. That's sped up. That looks. It pretty, was the ship that did it. Yes. Yeah. Where uh, the hell have you been? Well, when we covered it the other day, we didn't have this video. Oh yeah, no. We, we you had, thought you thought it was a freaking cyber attack, Vinny? No, no. Hold on. Still, hold on. Let's. Just, okay. Thank you, Adam, for leading me into what I'm gonna say. So last month, and I talked. Do about you still it, think it's a cyber attack? No, no, hold on. That look. Because guess what? The guys, Adam. To me, that looks like the movie. Oh, nice. The world behind. You're looking at me like I'm crazy because I'm asking you if it was a cyber attack. I want to know then why you're yeah, So it was a freaking not, ship. All, all I'm saying is, guys, and again, this is speculation. Nobody knows shit. There's the I legal waiver. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I he needs friend. to utilize that. He just gave you a waiver, friend. folks. No doubt. Vinny, hire Alina Halba. Alina. Well, guess what? Already my lawyer. Really good lawyer. Last month. I can't get videos, though, in of anyone. Yeah. No. Uh, Who knows? But Adam, I, I, I've been watching a lot of interviews of people that were in the Coast Guard. And this, yeah. there's so many questions of where's the tugboat? Where's the lead boat? Yeah. Where's all? This is such a strange. Yeah, and Rob, strange. you nailed it. It hit in the main spot. You have to go under this thing. Backs it looks up to, and then goes back. Yeah, it looks to me like it's purposely trying to go off it. The, the the route of the ship turned around, Adam, and came back to this part. And last month I reported this. Biden issued an EO embedding CISA, C-I-S-A, into the cybersecurity. And the main thing was vessels, harbors, ports, waterfront facilities. I'm just saying, after watching Leave the World Behind, shout out Barack and Michelle for trying to scare the shit out of people. It looks like that. The opening the opening of the movie mm. is a cargo ship. Ship, coming into the beach and, and landing on the thing and the whole movie's about cyber tech. We're not going to know. Wait, so We're never going to know. And here's my thing because I'm, I know I'll forget it. The next day within t four hours, five hours, Rob, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, comes up and goes, hey, listen, the federal government is going to pay for all of it. And people are like, wait a minute. Does it, don't they have insurance? He's like, yeah, yeah, because when there's insurance claim, you have to do all the research and yeah, all the investigation. There's no so investigation Vinny, when the federal government pays. With your legal acumen, yes, well, give, us, my lawyer. give us your assessment. Assessment on, the, on this? As a lawyer. I, I'm just saying. Prosecutor well, first all, O'Shana. First of all, let's give a shout out. Pete Buttigieg. Since he's been off but, this. But not Buttigieg. But, 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 am I Buttigieg? So listen. But, 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 by the way, can, since this guy's been in. <laughs> By the way, never hire just some little lawyer. I mean, my bad, a little mayor. Since yeah. he's been in Ohio train derailment, airplanes are falling out of the freaking sky, doors flying off. This is happening. If he was working at McDonald's flipping burgers, he would have been fired on day one. He's yeah. the guy that goes on maternity leave, paternity leave, whatever, as if one of him or his husband pushed out a child. This is what you get when that guy that is in charge. That wasn't a child. That was not. But Rob, what are you going to say? It's just odd the way that. Uh, it's a very unfortunate circumstance. Six people died. Yeah, so God rest their yeah. souls. But Overnight you workers at, working a graveyard shift. But Tom, look how far apart those pillars are from the bridge. And it makes direct contact. It's not like but, the side of it hit it. It hit it dead on. And look and how much space up. is between <laughs> those two pillars. Yeah. That, to me, is very freaky. Yeah, I, 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 have, and, and I have a question. At one thirty in the morning. At one thirty, Where that's not too crazy. Vinny, no, no disrespect. Thought, I'm talking about lawyers. This is why you pay for a good lawyer. <laughs> not a court-appointed attorney. Look at how we wore the same, I wore pink on purpose. Go ahead. Coordinated. Um, wait, so going back to you, because you definitely are very passionate about many things as I've seen since, but Epstein is one of them, right? Why is Ghislaine still alive? I, that's a very good question. I'm so glad you well, asked uh, okay, but, Counsel but, O'Shana but this, I want to know. He, the comedy you, seller. You, why hasn't she been off then? Well, uh, well because because if, then, then the, that's extremely obvious for them to kill both of them, because why isn't she speaking though? Why hasn't she told them where the tapes are? Vinny, she calls everything. It's called double jeopardy. Yep. You went. You learned that in law school. Yes, Shana. I did. Yes, we all know this. Vinny, why, why do you? Why do you think, why do you think they didn't kill her? I think they can because that, then it's too obvious. Then it's like we get okay. There's no question. I think, I think she's protected. She's 100. percent She's protected. She, she cut some deal and she's protected. So the, I mean, they'll never kill her. By the way, she looks. Have you seen her? Somebody did a, a, a looks, shot uh, of her through a fence. She, she looks or like or she has the money or something, and the money is going to or a kill switch. Like she's like, oh, you guys kill me, and then guess what? Everything's going to be uploaded. Yeah, she, she looks, she's not stupid. I don't think she's a stupid. I mean, I think she's. You know, but that's her right there. She looks like the Red Queen from Game of Thrones when she took off the necklace. That's what you turn into, <laughs> Rob. Remember? Remember? She was like, Egh. she turned into the old chick. That's what she. That's the. That's a demon right there. That's Adrenochrome on the left. And that's her without a dream no, 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 on the right. Uh, by the way, she is very, very sick. Yeah. Rob, Rob, how old is she, by the way? Who cares? 29. <laughs> Does she <laughs> spend the rest of her life in prison? Does she die in prison? I want to know when the trial's going to be. Never. Okay. Because if it was Trump, the trial would have already happened. Oh. So 
How come how, how soon Trump's should this... trials happen in six months? Yeah. But this chick what is sitting in jail and nobody's touched her and we have no list. I rest my case. Such a valid question. Yep. 62 years yep. old. Because... But, but what is the legal precedent on someone like this? How long does she just sit in jail with no trial? She should have had trial. That's what I'm saying. How long does this... Go on. I can't tell you because the law doesn't matter right now. Evidently. Ask Manuel Noriega. You, know, you would have to yeah. ask. Yeah, I can't tell you because it makes no sense. There is absolutely no reason. Actually, what they would do in something like this is have an expedited trial. But instead, they're settling the civil cases. And look at who settled the cases. Wasn't it a bank or JP Morgan? JP Morgan settled with the chi- with the girls. The girls. Yeah. Right. OK. Explain that to me. That says it all. Interesting. Basic question, by the way. Yeah. Well, why is it something you can get that quickly? to the bottom of, but you can't with this. What's more important? Somebody like Lee, you're saying was undervalued on a property or allegedly a bunch of kids, underage girls that have been raped and taken advantage of. Why are you taking your time on this? Shouldn't you be more urgent about this matter? That's what I'm saying. It's a very good question. Well, you know know why not? Because Bill Clinton was there 52 times. It's think about the people that are involved, guys. That's that's I I don't. How are they still walking around? By the way, I don't even think. But B. Diddy is fleeing. Okay. We know. We have photographic right. evidence of these people. We have witness testimony and all these girls have done is bring a civil lawsuit for money. Money is not going to help these girls. Yep. Okay. Money is not, it's a band aid. It's a band aid for a, a wound that you cannot heal. And I'm talking about re- real victims, yeah. not the BS victims that I've had to deal Alina, with. Are you saying that there's a double standard possibly somewhere? I want to, I want to wrap yeah. up last thing. Just play this clip here that I was telling you guys earlier. This just came in yesterday. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, uh, play the clip. National security and the warnings from the FBI to local, state, and federal law enforcement about the possibility of terror attacks right here in the homeland. CBS News got a look at a new joint bulletin that warns groups like Al Qaeda and ISIS will likely use the Israel Hamas war to increase calls for violence in the U.S. this holiday season. This bulletin right here says that the most likely primary targets could include churches synagogues and members of the Jewish community. Mm. And today, the FBI director was telling senators that the U.S. is facing the highest risk of attack in years, that there are blinking lights why. everywhere and warning terrorists will exploit the southern border. The head of the FBI says the bureau is working to identify and disrupt these potential attacks with foreign terrorist groups openly calling for strikes against Americans. You let them in. He also said yeah, that the oh number God. of threats are at a whole other level yeah. since the October yeah. 7th attack Wait, on Wait, why? Israel. Is it because Breaking. it's election season, maybe? Oh, weird. Here we go. Yeah. And I'm, oh, the, cra- and I'm COVID, the crazy one. Now we've got, no, yeah. I'm not crazy. I'm, I'm, no, and I'm saying, and people, uh, like, people yeah. I know, because I'm pretty sure in the I'm chat, they're you. like, the, he's cra- yeah, okay, that's why I bring a gun to church. That's why. Because of shit like that. Wide open border, wide open border, and now they're like, hey, guys, it's coming. You have to listen, to the, and I'm happy that you played that. We have to listen to shit like this. She's given that predictive program. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Karmic retribution. Here. They have to tell you before it Here. happens. This shit's coming. For them to say it, that means watch it, it, out. It, it's one of few things. A, a message like this, breaking news, yeah. warning before Easter. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like COVID. Stay home. Thanksgiving. Don't go don't to don't church. Go to church. Don't Because don't don't. if you pray, you may actually believe that this country will be back. Again. That's right. That's well, there's right. going to there's gonna come a time. I mean, most synagogues at this point. Have my husband's have my husband's on the fences? board of his synagogue, yeah, okay. and I know that they were discussing uh, the amount of money that the synagogue should put yes. into security for temple. And I am obviously a woman of faith. I believe in all faiths. I'll, I go to temple. I go with my husband. I go to church, as everybody knows. But to make people afraid of having faith, I think is the only way you create fear because I always say the opposite of fear is faith. So Mm -hmm. I know when I'm afraid or when people try and make me afraid in the job that I have and tell you they're going to do this to you, they're going to, I pray. So you're taking away the one protection, the one cloak that the government can't touch. So now we don't go to church. Right. And and this is what happens next is it starts with the synagogues. Here we go. And then it goes to the churches and it could potentially happen to the mosques. We saw what happened in Russia. And here comes Biden to save the day, even though he created the problem. Yep. Communist Marxism. The first thing you have to do is undermine the faith and prevent them from assembling. Right. Easy formula. Tom, SBF court real quick. Judge, Judge what's going on there? My judge, Judge Kaplan for Carroll. He was yep. my judge. You want to same judge? No. He is actually <laughs> going to hand down no, I don't. the sentencing today. Okay. And it's kind of funny. You know, you know when you negotiate with a friend, like you're selling a car or something like that, and maybe you're a couple dollars apart. Well, 
The defense lawyers want six years for SPF. The, the recommendation from the federal prosecutors is 50. So they're four decades apart, just four decades, but it's Kaplan. And Kaplan, mm. we're going to wait and see. Does he go easy on SBF, who gave $5.2 million to the Bidens and over $50 million to seven different major PACs that supported only Democrat candidates, that SBF, what does Kaplan do today when he yeah. hands down sentencing? Does he go light or does he go heavy? Because he was the same judge who? Hit Trump with yeah. 83. I mean, he was the guy on my case. Al- Alina, how do you defend someone like this? Who's just so clearly. Wake get, him up I, wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, I'm not saying you personally. But how does a lawyer defend someone like this? There's defenses. I mean, he he'll. I would plead insanity if you take a look at that picture. <laughs> okay, there you go. I mean, I would plead insanity, and you know what I would be doing if I was his. Honestly, if I was his lawyer, yeah. I would probably be cutting a deal, saying, "Look, I'm going to throw X, Y, Z." But the problem is, the deal that he can give, the names that he can give, they don't want those names. They want the other side. He wasn't involved in our side. He was on the other side. So he's no good to them. So now they got to put him in jail and shut him oh, up. Oh, yeah. Not those names. Not those. We don't want those names. Yeah, sure. Nope. Galen, Whoops. you're good. No trial. Yeah. You just chill, smoke just cigarettes. Smoke a cigarette and rot in you're jail. You're fine. And by the way, his parents <clears throat> are begging a judge to keep him out of prison, warning their son's social awkwardness could put him yeah. in extreme danger. <laughs> Aw. A month ago. <laughs> That's the story. What? Literally the same. Could you imagine look, saying my son is so face. awkward look at that the mom's face. put him in jail? Just go up a little bit. Oh, my yeah. God. No, show the Rachel Maddow. Rob, show the picture of the mom. You know what that is? That's, That's the father. Age progression. Is, That's the father? Like Max, Rob, show the picture of the mom. No, that is the mom. Oh, Stop it. Right Adam. Look, his mother, Barbara Freed. Oh, guys, my God. The, she's the same person that wrote the article with UC Berkeley on... We have to stop giving the pressure of responsibility to people because it's too much pressure. Did you see the paper she wrote years ago? No. Yeah, Rob, can you pull yeah. up that responsibility article, uh, a paper? Personal responsibility. SBF Correct. mom uh, uh, on personal responsibility. If you have that, you'll see it. Sam Bankman Freed's professor mother penned a 2013 essay, Shredding Philosophy of Personal Responsibility. Well, mom, your son is following... Uh, your guidance. Great mother. Read the yeah. Send him to Puff yeah. Island. She argued that the philosophy of personal responsibility has ruined the criminal justice and economic policy. As if she knew this day was coming right. wow. in 11 years. The name Probably of the That's art. both economic policy and criminal justice. Her son <sighs> scored a triple word score on all of that. All right, gang. Um, it's great a bit having real. you on again. Alina uh, Hubba. Like five minutes. Oh, it goes fine. very quick. That's 20 minutes. Uh, uh, yeah, we said 20 minutes. We kept it under 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> some of us are bad in math, and but uh, our guys in the back, we did we did what we did. But uh, uh, stay tuned, guys. I think we have uh, something that's going to come out later on today or tomorrow with the Boeing uh, uh, lawyer. And uh, we'll announce when that gets done. Aside from that, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Take care, everybody. Happy Easter. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bye-bye.